You're listening to the Pillow Podcast, the Padded Podcast of PillowGeekJustForFun.com. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're listening to the Pillaging Podcast, the companion podcast to PillagingJustForFun.com. The only Raider fan site made by Raider fans for Raider fans. Tune in every week on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Stitcher Radio. Call in and leave a message to be played on air at 408-909-PJSF. This episode brought to you by Creative Media Design Studio. Check them out at CreativeMediaModerate.com. It's time to pillage another podcast. I'm your host, Kenny Stapler. What's happening, Chad? Man, I'm living life, feeling good. How are you? Great man, yeah. I hiked the damn mountain today. Yeah, man, you saw that. Tell me about it, man. Uh, I hiked the damn mountain today. <laughs> yeah, I got blisters on my feet. Uh, I oh. hiked hiked Mission Peak up there in Fremont. So you guys can't see this right now, but Kenny's Kenny's up in the studio. He's got the toes out. He's got his feet out, man. He's got to let him breathe. I got the toes out. I, I feel I feel you, man. I've I, been on hikes before. Got these grown man <laughs> pants on. I feel like a grown ass man in these pants. Grown man pants. These are, these are, they let you breathe. There you go. I got these champion moisture wicking pants. Active wear. That sounds amazing. Yeah, I'm ready for performance tonight. I just call my shit windbreakers, man. <laughs> these ain't breaking no wind. Some man. Nike windbreakers. That's what I got. On. I just consumed five bratwurst, so I might be breaking some wind <laughs> shortly. Contain that shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Uh, <clears throat> how'd you like my alternative intro there? That was a, a genius. That was amazing. I could be doing the show like this I every think, single week. I think it's the way to go, man. No. Let the fans <laughs> let the fans say what they got to say about it. Let's see. Let's take a vote on the blog. Yeah. If you guys want uh, Kenny to use his alternative voice. Blog poll, Twitter poll. Uh, do you want to hear actual radio announcer voice <laughs> or the smooth stylings? <laughs> the smooth style Of Kenny Stapler. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I just a quick shout out, just a quick reminder, follow us on IG, uh, at the pillaging podcast with the underscores up in there. Just search the pillaging podcast. You'll find us all up in there. Um, go like the Facebook page, facebook.com slash the pillaging podcast, all one word. Um, and of course on Twitter at pillage just for fun. That's at pillage, just the number four fun. Um, if you're listening, you're not following us, follow us so you can find out and you kind of get involved. We do some interactive stuff. Yeah. It'll be good. Um, we were supposed to go live video feed this week. We were. That ain't happening. Technical difficulties. I live out here in, in, in Podunk, nowhere. <laughs> and uh, the, my, our internet connection is boo-boo. So. Shit, if you live in Podunk, nowhere, where do I live, man? Man, you live in <laughs> fuck nowhere. Uh, already off to a not safe for work start, which which is a good thing. It's the off season. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other thing I did today, I uploaded a playlist to our SoundCloud of all the music you hear during the show. So the intro, the little interlude beats, um, Gone by the Cosmic Dance Band. very yeah. popular. I get hit up a couple times a month about who does that out- outro song. There you go. It's the Cosmic Dance Band. You can find them at thecosmicdanceband.com or just search them. That song is called Gone. If you like that song, you'll like everything else they do. It's all great. Um, shout out to Silver and Black 666. He's the lead singer in that Hell group. Yeah. Was very involved in the engineering process. In fact, I got to sit down and talk to him about that process. He said the engineers were were very frustrated with him, <laughs> um, but he's very particular about his sound. Hey, and it shines through in the recording. You got to be man, all artists. When you're paying people for 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 things, you need to be particular about what you're doing. You can't just sit back. As a recording artist myself, you can't just sit back and let them do it because if you have a sound, you need to make sure you're on top of that. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. It's like if we, we do this podcast every week, if someone else was just running the show for us, right. it'd be a different podcast. Right. Right? Not but, happening. No, but it's all about you, me, Kane, putting our heads together. Hell yeah. And that's what we got. That's right. We got a brand. And we appreciate everybody that's been listening out there. It's been real cool. So, again, if you go to our SoundCloud account, soundcloud.com slash, I think it's slash pillaging. I know everything's inconsistent. Uh, when I started this off, I really wasn't thinking things through. But again, just search the Pillaging Podcast. You'll find us. Just Google that. You'll find us. But go on there. We got the little playlist right now. There's like five beats on there. We, we might be switching up uh, some of the music at some point. But right now, we're riding with it. Uh, I think Eternal Pessimist, who's in the Bad Tenants, good hip-hop group. Yeah. Um, he said he's going to be working on maybe an intro song for us. Oh, yeah, a little intro I rap. I like that. Right? I like that, man. I think it's cool. Yeah, hell yeah. So uh, if you come through with some quality EP, I will yield. I will yank that beat right off the, the intro, and we'll go with you. And uh, that means I don't have to do my broadcaster voice up front anymore. 
And just a side note for all of you that listen to the show, the music's not in there when I do the intro. Right. And that's, the intro's not pre-recorded. So I was just explaining this to my girl earlier. I was like, oh, that's, all that's post. We're trying to figure out how to yeah. do it live. Post. That's an yeah. industry term. It's post. And she for looked after. up. I said that, and she was like, she didn't know what I was talking about. I was like, <laughs> post, like afterwards. Like, he yeah. puts that in post production. That's it. There you go. Yeah. She's like, oh, okay. Yeah. So that, <laughs> the timing, all that, hey, impeccable. Mm. Impeccable. Mm. So. Hey, you get you get compliments, man. I'm telling you, my family members, <laughs> Sergio, my my, my 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 cousin and my brother, they're like, damn, dude. Yeah. Be, I mean, can he be on that? Can he be on that? Use my government right yeah, now. Yeah, I use your government. It's all you, good. So edit. We'll be we'll be that out. Beep. Beep. In post. The in post. There you go. <laughs> uh, you're all about to see our face sometime soon, anyways. So it is what it is. But uh, uh, your cousin Sergio, his government, but he goes by Nez. Nez. Look him up. He's he's also he's also putting out the music too. This is man. dope lyricist. Dope. So just before we actually get started, a little another anecdote. I uh, used to work for Champion. Yeah. Used, so sweats and all that. Like I said, I'm rocking the Champion gear right now. You pointed out. I'm stay with the Champion. Yeah, you stay with that Champion. Uh, well, I you're Champion. I was away on trip. I believe I was in North Carolina or Florida for the company, and my assistant calls me. We're trying to hire people. I said, Hey, I don't care. You just hire three people while I'm gone. <laughs> I'm gone. She calls me. She's like, I got this guy in here. He he didn't come dressed up, but think you might want to know what he was wearing I was like, what was he wearing he, he was head to toe champion <laughs> yeah and i was like well did he pay for it and she's like i, I guess <laughs> and i was like well if he's head to toe champion that's we need to get this guy in there he's <laughs> about, able. he's about the brand there you go so we, we hired him and i got to know him for a little bit and then we started talking hip-hop one morning i was doing the cash office and he's in there just chilling eating some breakfast and uh talking about hip-hop and he's like i rap i was like i rap too and then, uh, you know, I, at that time I had my little my little CD. I gave gave it to him. I don't know, you know, when somebody says they rap, they don't. You don't know what kind of where, how, right? You know, right? What kind of style? What kind of brand they got? And then, uh, you know, I, I finally got to hear some of his music later. And I was like, oh man, this guy's really coming with it. Which is it's it's why I quit rap. When I heard his mixtape, I just I quit rapping. <laughs> nah, nah, but. Um, <laughs> dude, so hey, hey. <laughs> that, you just made him smile right now. He's got to be listening to this, right? But now. it is fly. It's really fly. If you like that '90s true school sound, uh, you know, funky beats, mm-hmm. those dusty jazz samples, yeah, dope breaks, good lyricism, Nez, man, yeah, killing it. Um, good mix, man. He's come a long ways too, man. When he first started doing it, you know, yeah, I, from I've seen this from the beginning. You know, he was he was I was one of the first ones that he was like, hey, listen, I'm you know putting this out, yeah, and I've been. Every time he puts something out, man, you, download it. It's in my, it's in, you know, it's on my iTunes. I, I got all his music and you're, stacked up. You're quite the tastemaker. You're a good person to run that by. So <laughs> thank you. We might thank have you. to get into top thank five hip hop somethings we, we later in the show. We can do that. Later in the show. We can do that. Uh, it's off season. Um, there's really not a lot of news right now. Right. So as we get, especially when we get past the draft, we're going to open the show up a little bit to some other topics. Mm-hmm. So hopefully it doesn't scare some of you guys away. But uh, we got a lot to talk about, so we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna try to keep it politic free. Sometimes we got too much to talk about. Sometimes too much. <laughs> two hours, two and a half hour shows, man. It's, it's wild. It's getting into like hardcore history territory. Right. <laughs> There's another dope podcast. Make sure you check out Hardcore History. Um, yeah. So Nez Nez Life on Instagram, I think he is. It's uh, I think so. Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the actual name on Something his like Instagram that. is, but if you look up Nez, he'll pop up. Yeah. Look and up then, Nez. Uh, NEZ. Shout out to OJ, the producer. OJ, producer. the producer, man. He, put, he puts together some dope beats for him, man. And uh, so anyways, long story short, too late. Um, years later, I meet you. Yeah. And, and you're like, my cousin raps. I'm all for real. I had to check it out. And it's it's Nez. Yeah. And you're like, whoa. Yeah. I used to work with him, man. Yeah. Champion. So yeah. it's, and now I work with you. Yeah. So it's crazy. Small world, man. Small and world. Nez was working with us for a while, too. Yeah. He was rocking yeah, with us. He so. was. Yeah, it's cool, man. You got a cool family, bro. Thank you. Real cool family. I thought so too, but you know, I'm biased. <laughs> yeah. Well, not everybody loves their family <laughs> as much as you do. And that's just a testament to how cool your family actually is. You ready to get into this? Let's do it. Vontae Davis visited the Oakland Raiders this week, he, mm. as well as the San Francisco 49ers. Mm. You can't stop an SF without stopping in Oakland. Right. Right. Um, both teams need help at the corner position. Mm-hmm. So, as you know, our cornerback crew. Um, a lot of question marks there, you know. Uh, T.J. Carey 
and or Sean Smith likely gone this offseason. One of the two. Um, Sean Smith might be in jail for all we know. Right. Seriously. Right. Uh, TJ Carey, um, pretty solid season. You know, no interceptions or anything, but good season. He graded out really well in PFF. Uh, you know, we talked about his consistency uh, year over year last week. Um, I would like to see him get brought back, but it, it, I'm really kind of confused or uncertain as to what his market value is going to be. Considering no picks, but he he did grade out well. I want to say he was locked down, but he did a good job in coverage. So he could command some money. Uh, Vontae Davis obviously had a short year last year with the injury. I think he only played five games. Uh, he started, I think, 14 the year before that and was pretty much consistent numbers the years before that. And uh, he, I, he's not averaging, but um, highest number of picks per season, about four. Mm. And uh, not every year, but I think out of the years he's been in the league, I think four four of those seasons he's had four picks. So not an interception machine either. But four ain't too shabby. Right. But he's considered a big physical lockdown corner. And I looked it up. What his salary was last year, he counted 10.2 mil against the cap. I don't know if the injury brings that down a little bit or maybe keeps it about the same, but about 10 million. Um, I don't know th- that we bring this guy in or right. not. And a lot of people are excited about the Vontae Davis thing. I think that we could probably get him at value, which sort of um, <clears throat> doesn't address all the needs there at that position. But it sort of frees us up a little bit, at least in the first round. I know a lot of people are high on the the corners in the first round, as am I. Right. But I also think there's a lot of defensive line talent there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And again, we're gonna. I promised you guys, the listeners, we're gonna get into the draft. Everyone's doing their mocks right now, and it's draft this and draft that. Look, the combine is 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 not too far away. Right. And we're really waiting for that the pajama Olympics there you go. to pop off. <laughs> and then we're going to get into the draft because we still have a ways to go for the draft. So I don't want this to be a draft show every single week. Right, 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 right. I mean, get into it when it when it really matters, right? Yeah. We're really getting locked in. We're, com- when, we're when compiling te- information. When the team starts to get locked in, yeah. you know, then that's when we come with that show. Yeah, All right, it. so be ready for that, y'all. That's it. We'll be doing our homework. John Gruden's back and he's ready to grind. If you haven't read the SI interview yet, read it. It's good. I'm I'm halfway through it. It's a long one. Yeah, it's it, a long one. It's a good one though. It's really good. Really good. Um so some there were some interesting things in, in that interview. Uh one of them is apparently he's writing a Broadway play. <laughs> which That's dope. That caught me by surprise. <laughs> I know, right? He um, said he saw it more as a television show or a movie. A I mean, movie. If he saw it more as a movie. Okay. He's he, that's what he said. But they're like, hey, kind of <laughs> writing like a book slash Broadway show. Yeah. Did, did this is a sign that John needed to get back into coaching, <laughs> right? Because you got way too much time on your hands. <laughs> but I was writing a movie slash TV show slash Broadway <laughs> plays slash hip hop or a. <laughs> Uh, about the football gods. The you know? football gods. Guys like Bear Bryant, Vince Lombardi, looking down at the state of football now. And let's throw Al Davis in Al there. Al Davis, throw that in there. Throw Don't that forget in there. to put him in there. And uh, Specifically because of what the article talked about. Yeah. yeah. And, and apparently in this show, they come back down under different but slightly similar names and right. try to save football. And that's when the light went on in his head. And he's like, I'm here. I need to save football. Yeah. So some of the things he's frustrated with, obviously football is being vilified. Yeah, for good reasons. I mm-hmm. mean, the health stuff is is real. It's really real. And um you know, if you're if you're if you want to know about some alternatives cuz I know right now they're looking at banning football at a lot of schools. In fact, it's already started at some schools and there's a there's a, a company or an organization out there it's called Hit Football, H I T, I believe it is. Mm-hmm. Be hit or hip. Oh my god. Um, <clears throat> but it's run by a gentleman, and I can't think of his name right now. W- wasn't really prepared to talk about this, but go check them out. They are like a non-impact football league, mm. and I think some people might think, well, that's the wussification of football. <clears throat> but the way I see it is, if you can get these kids playing non-impact at a young age and learning the fundamentals and play design, right? and then once they get to high school, maybe at least you can um, delay Mm-hmm. That type of damage mm-hmm. for a while. Mm-hmm. Now that doesn't make it disappear, but it is an alternative to shutting down programs, right? Because there's a lot of character that gets built in sports. Yes, and uh, of course, you know, there, there's a lot of kids' lives that are just saved by sports. Definitely, man. I mean, uh, 
I mean, how many? There's countless stories, right? There's yeah. countless stories of of people that that's their way out. It's the way out of of of, of all the negativity in their life of yeah. you know living being brought up by a single parents, whatever it may be, living mm-hmm. in harsh conditions, whatever you know that we hear tons of those stories, and and sports is their way out of that situation, yeah, into success, mm-hmm. into a better life. So I would hate to see that disappear. You know, I would yeah. hate to see that disappear. I'm biased too. I played football in high school. Yeah. I didn't play Pop Warner. I didn't play, you know, yeah. You know, when I was younger. And maybe that was a good thing. Maybe that was a positive thing. But um I don't know. I mean, you, there's positives and negatives for sure. Yeah. yeah. You you can see both sides. So I was a little off track there, but I, I thought I'd mention that cuz I, I think yeah. uh some more eyeballs on that organization. So I again, again uh HIT or or HIP, I don't know if there's a correction there, I'll tweet it out, but um I, again, I'm just kind of off the cuff right now. <laughs> Al Davis's office remains untouched, and untouched unchanged. Untouched. As a matter of fact, Mark can't move into it. No. He's like, "Nope. My office is across the way." I according think, to the according to the the interview, right? According right. To the interview, and I believe that because yeah. Al Davis's presence it lives on mm-hmm. in Raider Nation. You can imagine what that's like in the building itself. Yep, you can almost feel maybe him looking down and not approving. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, uh, it, it's weird. He's such an intimidating figure. I feel like part of this is out of respect. Part of this is almost out of fear. Right. <laughs> like, don't don't cause this. <laughs> Don't cause a curse right now, man. Yeah. Don't you go in there and touch the old man's things. Yeah. So his, his jackets are still on the rack. His play design still up the on the whiteboard. The last board. thing that he wrote up on the board is still there. Yeah. In 2011. That's cool. It's still there. That's wild, still man. Still written up. That's wild, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but that's cool, man. I, yeah. uh, I was reading that. It's like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of gave me the chills. It did. It did. It that. gave me the chills, too, man. <laughs> Quote from John. He says, uh, so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to come back and I'm going to put it all on me. Everybody's going to want to kick my ass, step on me. Mm-hmm. They can't wait to talk about what a dumbass I am mm-hmm. and how shitty I was to start with, how overrated I am. Mm-hmm. I hear it all. I know what's going to happen. And I'm like, come on. Just like Al Davis. When I was here, he said, the great thing you've got going, John, is they're never going to rip you. They're going to rip me. Mm. Yeah. And now John's putting himself in that position. Right. Well, guess what, John? They're they're kind of already ripping Mark. Half of Raider Nation's ripping Mark. If you could take it all on you, I would l- appreciate that. Because the civil war that's brewing right now in Raider Nation, yeah, making me sick to my stomach. Right. And I've already talked about. It. I'm not even going to talk about. We don't that need again. to talk about it. Yeah, we don't need to talk about it. This is the greatest but fraternity in all of professional sports. That's it, man. Y'all need to get back on the wagon together. Stick together, man. That's it. <laughs> Uh, John engaged with the fan. They went to Ricky's Sports Bar, part of the interview, and they went over there to have a little lunch. And uh, the fan had hit him up, asked about Marshawn Lynch. What are we going to do with Marshawn, John? <laughs> and uh, he's been pretty tight-lipped, but, I mean, this is a guy he can talk to. Right. And it made it into the article. And John, I think, he, uh, you know, the rest of us would agree. If we if we got Marshawn, we need full Marshawn. Hell yeah. Not half beast mode, full beast mode. Full beast mode. Yeah. And I think he alludes to, if you pay attention to last season, they really kind of eased Marshawn back into the pool. The uh, second half of the season, he was getting 25-plus carries, 22-plus carries. In mm-hmm. the first half of the season, you see a lot of Marshawn in the first quarter. You wouldn't really see him again until like the third, uh, late third, and a full dose of him in the fourth. He was paced. He was paced. Yeah. And so if, if Marshawn's coming back, I think he both means the commitment mentally and physically. Because um, he's a feature back. He can be a feature back at least for one more season, we feel like. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, John's fully aware of that. Yeah, man. I, I, you know, we talked about this last season when he was brought on board that we that we expected him to be used sparingly early on in the season. Yeah. And really be used towards towards that, what we expected to be playoff run. Right? Um, and that's what we kind of saw. Mm-hmm. But then, of course, the season didn't turn out the way that we wanted. Nope. And people took negativity to that way that they that he was used, and you know, calling him out for whatever reasons, right? Yeah. We've heard them all. Um, for me, a man was this dude was retired; he wasn't doing any football. That's the way you bring a guy back to assure that he's actually going to be successful. Yeah, you oh, got to yeah. bring him back slowly. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. So he's got a year under his belt, and if we bring him back, I expect him to go hard right from the get. 
Hard body karate. There you go. As Mike Rap says. Mike Rap. I'm still riding with you, Rap. Hell yeah. After what happened this week. Yeah. Won't get into that. That's We're with you. That's a different podcast. I'm a fan. Not everyone's a fan. I get why you're not a fan. But look, the dude's a comedian. Like, take it with a grain of salt. Stephen mm-hmm. A. Smith, not a comedian. You know what, though? He's a bigger clown. Yeah. <laughs> okay? He got that right, man. And I'm not saying I don't like to watch Stephen A. Smith. He is entertaining, but I did Whatever, with your yeah, takes. I, I can get over. I can get over him real quick and skip Bayless too, man. Yeah, both yeah. of those guys. Both those dudes. Uh, so John felt like he was spinning his wheels. He's doing all this this prep work. I, somebody tweeted out an older video. It was just after John had uh, retired. He, had, I think, maybe his second year on Monday Night Football, and they were showing his production meetings. And he's on the board drawing up plays, and everybody around the table just looks over it <laughs> so over it they're like this guy this is a production meeting <laughs> you could just tell from that moment and up until now this guy's just miss coaching man hell yeah because he's doing it all he's, he's still putting in the same hours with with zero results i mean you can go on and be like that was a nice broadcast but you can't put that on your wall no one's going to give you a trophy right i don't know if he if he's won an emmy or or, or that works or Ace Awards or whatever. Ace right. Awards, those are the cable awards. The uh, what is it? The ESPN award. The um, I don't know. I, I don't forget know. the name. I don't know. Of it. There's yeah. too many damn awards, man. There's too many damn awards. We gotta cut back on awards, man. That's what yeah. I say. <laughs> There's only one award that means anything in this 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 line of work, and that's a Lombardi Trophy. There you go. That's it. It's the only one that matters. And it, it seems like you know, even though he got one in Tampa, the fact that he didn't get one in Oakland is just burning inside of him. Mm-hmm. And that tells me everything I need to know about John mm-hmm. coming back to Oakland. So that was the other thing he said is he riding around in his brand new black with silver trim Mercedes Benz brought, bought by the company on top of the contract. There you go. And apparently he's a terrible driver. <laughs> if you read through that, that interview, that's one of the best parts of the interview. Uh, is, uh, you know, he, he's aware. A lot of people are questioning whether or not he still got it. And, and John says, I still got it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I, I believe it. I believe it too, man. Yeah. I believe it too. I believe it too, because if he didn't still have it, he wouldn't be going nuts in the office, yeah, putting in all those hours that he's that he already is. He's, he's been since the get right since yeah. they signed him. He's been in there. He's been there. He's locked himself away, man. He uh, they they talked about his trip back to Florida to say goodbye to everybody. He said, "I already done that. I've been been there, been back. I'm already moved." And he's like, "Was it hard for you?" And he's like, "Yeah, it was. It was hard, but he's something like uh, I'm like Chevy Chase, man, in uh, vacation." <laughs> He said, you know, uh, the scene where Chevy's looking at the Grand Canyon, he kind of takes a deep breath, and he's like, all right, back in the car. <laughs> We've seen it. You know? Yeah. John's focused. That's the Grand Canyon. <laughs> <laughs> he's focused on one thing right now. So That's uh, it, man. <clears throat> anyways, moving on from John Gruden. <laughs> Janikowski's out. We said farewell to him last week. Again, farewell to Sebastian. Yes. Uh, he had a really heartfelt goodbye to Raider Nation. It, it sounded in that message like he is indeed retiring. Mm-hmm. Um, but he also spoke on this last season. He was asked, uh, I saw this was, was put in an article by Raiders beat, but I don't know who the original writer on this was. That's my bad. Again, I, I spent a lot of time before the show today trying to get the video feed up. So I'm a little, yeah, little underprepared. Bear with me. Forgiven. Forgiven. Thank you. Thank you. Um, but he basically, uh, they asked him about what happened last season and he said, you never got on the same page offense, defense, special teams. Um, there's a lot of players that seem like they cruised through the season. Mm. And in my opinion, it seemed like there was a lot of coaches that did the same thing. Mm. Uh, he said mm. that Jack did a good job. Um, but at the end of the day, we all we hate that saying on the show, but at we the end of the day. say a lot. He uh there just wasn't any buy in. They just, you know, they bought out. Yep. So here we are again. We had similar Joe Bugle situation and, and enter John Gruden. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Alden Smith can't keep up with the child support payments. Give him a job, man. <laughs> Give him a job. Go get a job. <laughs> go, 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 yeah, go get a job, man. So if I'm, you got children, you need to stop being, uh, you know, diva. Yeah. And go get your ass a job. Um, here's what I got to say about it. <clears throat> I pay child support. Mm-hmm. I'm on time every month. Mm-hmm. But I do know the child support is based on your income at mm-hmm. that time. Mm-hmm. I don't know how California works because I pay out of state. But... They might need. They might be able to reevaluate that based on his current income, which is right. zero. Right. But I also got to say this, Alan Smith. We've been waiting for you to come back. We have been very forgiving of you. We know that mentally you deal with a lot of issues. Um, it's easy for people to write off the things that you've done, but I think folks, especially like you and Iche, that mm-hmm. deal with mental health on the daily basis, mm-hmm. 
know that sometimes you just can't help yourself. Right. But that doesn't mean you can't go get help for yourself. Right. And I don't know if he's doing that. I know he had a rehab stint at one time. But unless you're going in uh, ongoing intensive therapy, Mm -hmm. and maybe in his case, uh, intensive outpatient program, then you're not doing anything to better your situation. And even if you are reinstated, I don't know how many people are going to take a look at you if you can't prove that you've been making good on yourself. Right. Right. The other part of that is you had an NFL salary for, uh, I don't know, was it like a good five years, somewhere around there? And you couldn't pocket any of that money for a situation like this. Right. And that's on you too. Mm-hmm. So I have sympathy for you, Alden, as far as your day-to-day struggles. But when it comes to your responsibilities and your children, that's on you. And you got to look out for that. The children are the future and they're your future. And you've done little to secure your future. Now, I'm talking big on a microphone right now. <laughs> I don't know Alden Smith personally. So I right. just I, I'm, my apologies if I got this all wrong, Alden, because we are in your corner. Right. I know Kane, speaking of corners, <laughs> I know Kane especially has been rooting for your comeback and has been very optimistic about that. And not only, you know, not only is that good for us as a team, but it tells me you're back on top of your game. Exactly. And that's, I like to see people on top of their that's game. That's it. That's it. So, I mean, how do you feel about it? I, I, I feel kind of the same way. You know, there's mixed, mixed feelings, right? When it comes to, comes down to it. Obviously, he's an amazing athlete. And who wouldn't want him to be a part of the team? Yeah. Um, but like you said, if it's um, if it's one of those things where it's just in and out, in and out, in and out, what's the point? There's nothing to gain there. Yeah, like he's got to be committed, and he's got to be committed to himself before he can be committed to the team. Right, right. You you got to be committed to to the actual you know, process of whatever it is that needs to happen for your mental health to become yeah. more stable. Um, and we 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 are like you said we we work in this line of work. On a daily basis. Yeah. And we know one thing for sure. That there's nothing that the person or the provider can do when the patient isn't really willing to take in. So he could be showing up. If you're showing up and you're showing up and you're just sitting in, listening, just because you want to be able to say, I was there. Yeah. You're not gaining anything. Right? You got to be bought in, man. You got to be 100% bought in. And that's the only way you're going to see any change, positive change in your life. 100. Like you said. We're on your side, man. We're in your corner. We're hoping that you get get stuff together. Yeah. And that you are able to play again, even if it's not for the Raiders, you know? Yeah, rolling blunts on uh, Snapchat ain't, ain't going to cut it, <laughs> it's bro. It's not smart, man. It's Come not on. a smart move. It's not smart. So, Alden, get your priorities straight. Get back on top of your game. Get yourself some help, man. Even if you don't come back to the Oakland Raiders or the NFL in general, just get it together, bro. You're a talented guy. Your 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 teammates speak highly of you. Mm-hmm. So, I know the personality's there. Um Get back to, to being in good health, man, just just to, as a person. That's it, man. You know, once That's a Raider, it. always a Raider anyways. Like, we'll remember you. You were here a short time, and uh, you made the jump across the bay like many greats did. And uh, you ended your career in the right place. I wish it could have been longer, but um, take care of yourself, Alden. Yeah. So uh, we're coming up on our first short interlude here. Um, I failed to mention at the top of the show, we, we, we had a lot of talk about. We got Mitchell Renz coming on from Chat Sports. So uh, we're going to take a short break and um, bob your head to the beat. And uh, when we come back, Mitchell Renz. Yeah. Cool. Oh. All right, joining us on this week's show is Mitchell Renz from Chat Sports. Mitchell, uh, tell the folks where they can find you online and uh, who you write for and, and a little bit about yourself. Cool, man. Yeah, so again, my name is Mitchell Renz. Please follow me on Twitter at Mitchell Renz365. I'm the senior writer and an on-air host at Chat Sports. So make sure you guys check out all of our awesome stuff on Facebook. We're essentially the ESPN of Facebook. We have millions of followers on Facebook, so... Please check out Jet Sports. And then I also write for Gridiron Experts and Fantasy Pros. I'm a fantasy football nut, but Twitter is my main outlet, at Mitchell Wren 365 and always willing to talk about, I guess, just about anything right now. And, yeah, I also cover the Oakland Raiders for Chat Sports. So that's, that's kind of why I'm guessing I'm on here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why you're here. And uh, <laughs> that long list of affiliates you have is, is the reason why you're Mitchell Wren's 365. This guy – 
does not take days off. Right. There you go. Mitchell. That's, that's why I came up with the name, actually. <laughs> there you go. He's, he's working hard. And now he's working hard for you, Raider fan. So uh, follow this man on Twitter. He's uh, He's got a sense of humor. He puts out good content. And uh, everything that you guys do over at Chat Sports, pretty slick. Your production value is great. And um, I enjoy it. I, I, I recently actually found out about you. We was tipped off to you by my co-producer, Raider Kane, who's co-producing this this segment here and uh, this this week's show. And um, a couple of our bloggers on on PJ4F.com um, were like, yeah, that guy, that's a good get right there. That guy's yeah. quality. So, um, you know, with the endorsements, I went and checked it out. I was like, ah, how am I missing out on this? So yeah. um, good stuff, man. Good work. Uh, glad you have, have you on. And um, I just kind of pick your brain a little bit. So first off, we had some callers that had some questions. Actually, we had one caller call in with a question. Then we had somebody tweet a question. So I'm going to get out of the way. I'm going to let Podunk Raider, Raider Rockstar. He's now Podunk Raider because we called him out. It's like, there's no rock stars out there in the middle <laughs> Midwest, um, which isn't true. But anyways, I digress. Podunk Raider has a question for you. I'm going to get out of the way. Let him ask that question directly. So Podunk is asking, what are the odds of the Raiders making the postseason in 2018? And his second question is, will the Raiders go cornerback in the first round of the draft? He throws some names out at you, Fitzpatrick, Jackson, and Denzel Ward. Uh, what you think about those guys if we go corner? And, if, and I guess if not, where, where are you looking at in that first round? So I'll kick this off first. So I'll kick this off first with, I guess my interpretation of what the Raiders could possibly be in 2018. I love, I love that they got Gruden. He's going to be a hard nosed guy. I, I think he's going to fit in pretty well with the Raiders. However, I mean, I, I was really surprised that this team was six and 10. I think they're going to try to rebuild that offensive line. Marshall Newhouse just couldn't step up and get things done. So I think if they can build that line around Derek Carr, hopefully the receivers don't have the drop that they did. I mean, anytime Jared Cook leads the team in receiving, receiving yards, I believe it's 688. It's probably not what we were going into Ouch. looking for, I guess, going into the season. Right. Amari Cooper, Crabtree, those are – if you would have told me Michael Crabtree and Amari Cooper were on the same team, I would have said that's arguably the best wide receiver duo in the NFL. And those guys just couldn't catch a cold. I mean, it was a heck of a black hole on offense. And mm. I think right now the Raiders are looking at a solid – I think they could flip that at 10-6. and six. Mm. They have the third easiest schedule – in the NFL, according to CBS, and that's just based off the of winning percentages from last year. I'm, I'm a little skeptical on the division in general now that the Chiefs lost Alex Smith. I think the Raiders can get back on top of that division. And let's not forget that Derek Carr was an MVP candidate before he was injured. So yeah, right. I like Derek Carr. I like that offense to kind of get it turning again. I think John Gruden's going to – if the Raiders team buys into John Gruden – this is going to be a very successful team for many years to come. So I look forward to covering the Raiders at Chad Sports because they're a fun team to cover. Now, if we go into the draft, cornerback is no doubt in need. We know Sean Smith was pretty disappointing last season. I think TJ Carey has been their best corner the last four years. Mm -hmm. However, I was a little surprised that they cut Amerson. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it frees up, I believe it freed up 6.5 mil. However, I was still – kind of surprised by it so for that inkling there's a point of me it's like okay maybe these guys go out and get a cornerback in the first round 10th overall pick or maybe they win the coin flip with the 49ers and get the ninth i think they're going to address their cornerbacks in free agency i like aaron colvin malcolm butler's the name i've been hearing a lot actually that could end up going there mm -hmm. but i think they're going to go linebacker i think they're going to go either with a guy like roquan smith out of georgia who is sure he's a little bit undersized, but man, that guy can cover the sidelines, the sidelines, and he's quick. And when I think of Navarro Bowman, Khalil Mack, and a potential Roquan Smith linebacker duo, that's scary. Yeah. I think it's funny that Navarro Bowman led the Raiders in tackles, and he only played in 10 games last year with 89. That's crazy. Navarro Bowman could really help mold Roquan Smith to be a great leader, a great player on that defense. But if they don't go Roquan, I think they could also go with a linebacker named Tremaine Edwins. Yeah. Out of Virginia out of Virginia Tech, athletic specimen. He is just a freak. He's a little bit more raw, I think, than Smith. But I think they're gonna go linebacker. I think that's their biggest need on defense. But if they don't address their secondary in free agency, um, they may lean with Ward, but Ward's Ward scares me a little bit. I 
he he scares me a little. I like Joshua Jackson. He's long and athletic from Iowa, but yeah, um, I hope that answers your question. So it, there's a, there's a lot of rambling there. Yeah, no, definitely more than answers the question. I, I like your answer. I'm I'm a Jackson fan myself. I think he's the most well rounded corner in that first round. I know he's slated to go a little bit later than we were picking, but I also know his stock is rising. Uh, Denzel Ward to me. Uh, he's fast, he's quick, but he's undersized, has a problem getting his head turned around. And some people might get mad at me when I say this, but the guy he kind of reminds me of is a more talented version of DJ Hayden. His potential for pass interference in the NFL, to me, is just way too high. I'm a pass on Denzel Ward. Mm-hmm. I think he's athletic, I think he's talented, but I just don't like his tendencies. I- I'd rather have a, a longer um guy like Joshua Jackson with more reach I think that he's got the um, awareness that we're looking for Mm -hmm. he doesn't have the athletic um, supremacy as somebody like Ward or Fitzpatrick but I think just all around well-rounded well-rounded player physical attributes and the smarts I think that that's the guy that makes the easiest transition to the NFL Uh, but I'm also with you Mitchell I don't go corner in that first round hopefully we can address something through free agency I'd like to see us retain TJ Carey and I guess maybe I have a question for you on that is if if we were to retain TJ Carey, what's his market value going to be this off season? What what does TJ look to pull in this off season? Well, I know he made I think he made five hundred and seventy five k last year. I don't know his exact market value, but he's a Bay Area guy and he wants to play in Oakland. So I know he wants to come back and play for the Raiders. He's he's said it numerous times. So I think like he's he was an un, he was undrafted. Okay, so. And he kind of proved himself. I believe he played in 98% of snaps for the Raiders this past year. And yeah. when you look at a guy like that, he wants to stay in Oakland. And I think he could even potentially take a little bit less money in order to stay in Oakland. I mean, Gary and Conley has yet to show up. Yeah. Um, what's his name? OB, I, LB, I can't even pronounce your last name, Melifonu, whatever the heck it is. <laughs> if he can step up and play out of the safety, yeah. I mean, he could play cornerback. He could play safety. He's an athletic freak. I've actually seen that kid play live uh, up in Boston when I used to live there, but really, really athletic. I mean, they have secondary talent. It's young, it's raw, but mm-hmm. they need. I think they need linebackers because yeah. realistically, if if Bowman doesn't come back, which I think Bowman's going to end up coming back, man, that you could argue that they have one of the weakest linebacker crews. And thank God they have Cleo Mack. Happy birthday to Cleo Mack! It's actually his birthday. Yeah, I don't know if you know yeah. that. Yeah, happy birthday. Um, <laughs> The other, and I think, uh, contrarily, if we if we don't go linebacker there in the first round, you know, again addressing the secondary free agency, you end up with KJ Ob in the the, the safety positions there. You got Conley and Carey looking like I'm hoping that he comes back, and you pick up a guy like Colvin or Butler. That secondary all of a sudden looks pretty good serviceable um some question marks again with the youth and then you got Bowman there in the middle spot uh you got a guy like Lee or James that can supplement there that that can add um I think those guys are are again raw but under his tutelage can can be serviceable so if we weren't to go to linebacker in that that first round I like a guy like Vita Vea um or even Chubb if he happened to follow us I think would be a no-brainer there and getting some some more push on that defensive line getting some attention away from Khalil Mack and then now you have uh, you have playmakers at every level of the defense, m- multiple. So uh, a lot of options there in the first round. We'll continue to break that down as we go forward in the weeks here on the show. Um, another question that comes from one of our fans is UK Raider on Twitter. He said it, it costs too much money for him to call us from the UK. So he, he, tw- he tweeted at us. Um, he wants to know, and I'm kind of with this, if I'm going to go running back, if we're going to draft a running back, whether Lynch comes back or not, I think we need to get a young guy in there. We don't know what Hood is going to do. So if we were to draft, draft a running back this year, I'm look, looking at second or possibly third round. So he wants to know, out of Rashad Penny, Ronald Jones, or John Kelly, who's the guy that you pick out of that bunch? Well, shout out to UK. I used to live in uh, Germany. I lived in Germany for a year, so I know uh, I know how difficult that can be to get your football fixed in another country. But mm-hmm. the, the running back that I've been hearing – the most for the Oakland Raiders is John Kelly, mm. running back out of Tennessee. He's I don't want to say he's Darius Geis because I don't think he's hes as talented as Darius Geis, but he's a big downhill runner, which I think is going to be the future of this Raiders team. I mean, I think with that offensive line, they could really build a solid run game and be more power nose football. I mean, I think that's what John Gruden wants. Yeah, I'm not totally sold on DeAndre Washington. I liked him coming out of Texas Tech, but 
He's had some fumbling issues, and Jalen Richard. These guys are more just scat backs to me. But John Kelly's a powerful runner. I think they could end up getting him probably in round four. Uh, I, I did my uh, on my Raiders show with the Raiders report on Oakland Raiders by Chat Sports on Facebook. Selfish plug, but <laughs> I read that John Kelly is the target that the Raiders are looking at in that fourth round. Big, mm. powerful guy, and it's it's the power run because I think Marshawn's going to be coming back. But there's reasons why there's all this Carlos Hyde and some even Le'Veon Bell hype around the Raiders. But yeah, I think it's right. John Kelly out of them all. If I'm going just who I could pick, sure, I think Ronald Jones is probably the most talented. But I think John Kelly is going to be the guy they get in the fourth round. And, you know, a lot of Raider fans talking about how John wants a feature back. And John said it himself in the Sports Illustrated interview this this week. Um and they talk about Charlie Garner, but I think a lot of people forget that the feature back in Oakland at that time, Tyrone Wheatley. it was Tyrone Wheatley. It was a thunder and lightning approach. Charlie yep. Garner was a change of pace guy. There was games where he got more carries depending on matchups. But, you know, I know how you feel, Mitchell. I know how most of us feel about Washington and Richard and, and their problems. But I think with the right feature back in there, a guy like Washington can be a weapon. Now, Carr had a down year last year, but let's go back to 2016 when Carr was, again, an MVP candidate. You had Richard and Washington that were averaging over four and a half yards per carry. Mm -hmm. So these guys had better years than they did last year as well the year prior to that. So I like Washington. I think he's a good combination of size and speed. And when he can hold on to the ball, I think he's a good weapon. He can catch the ball. I see him as being a nice change of pace to a guy like John Kelly or Geis if we ended up going in that direction. Or in the meantime, in the interim, Marshawn Lynch. So it's just we got to get things clicking on all the right cylinders for that period. to work. Just period, right? Yeah, the running game in the NFL is a rhythm game, you know. And if you can't get that rhythm going, you got no rushing game. And yep. it's a domino effect after that. So did you have something that you wanted to ask, Mitchell? Yeah, actually, since we're on the topic of uh, free agents, um, I saw your piece that you put up on Chat Sports uh, about the 10 uh, defensive free agents. Um, and uh, you have quite a list. Obviously, there's some guys that, that we want to retain, Navarro being one of them, Danico, uh, TJ Carey possibly. Um, but uh, – you also touched on guys like uh, Malcolm Butler, uh, Tremaine Johnson. Uh, so my question is, you know, do you see the Raiders going defense on, in, in free agency? Obviously, there's some offensive weapons out there as well. Do you see them focusing more in free agency on the defensive side? And is that specifically going to be looking at the corner? And who is your favorite corner that, for the Raiders to take in free agency? Personally, I don't think they have the money. They'll okay. be able to land guys like Tremaine Johnson, right, or Malcolm Butler. I, mean, I think they have fourteen point eight million in cap space right now. Don't quote me on that. It, I know it was twenty three in the beginning of starting free agency, but if they cut guys like a potential Michael Crabtree, who's scheduled to get seven point seven mil, or if they cut a guy even like Marshawn Lynch, who's five point two million, or I, they're, I'm almost certain they're going to cut Sean Smith, who's scheduled to make eight point five. So yeah. When they start cutting some of these guys, okay, now we free up some space. I'm just saying, if Tremaine Johnson comes knocking on our door, comes knocking on the Raiders' door, and he's like, hey, guys, like I'm willing to play for you, that's somebody I would definitely, definitely consider. However, I think he's going to stay in Los Angeles. Malcolm Butler's interesting. Malcolm Butler's an interesting one to me. I know he doesn't want to stay in New England, but I, I am not totally sold on him going to the Raiders. If there's a guy that I think is the most likely, it's Aaron Colvin. Mm -hmm. who's another kind of like smaller slot cornerback who I think could be potentially even more than that. He was just overshadowed by uh, Jalen Ramsey Jalen Ramsey, and A.J. Boye in Jacksonville. Right. He, he's a talented guy. He's only 26. He's not going to require a lot of money. I think that's the route that they go if they're going to go in free agency, and then they can afford to maybe pick up a few extra guys like Roquan Smith in the first round. Mm -hmm. I, I like Gary on Conley. He's got a high ceiling, and I like Obi. He's an athletic freak. Yeah. I think they have young guys who they can rely on, and they don't need to break the bank for Kyle Fuller, who has really only had one good year. Malcolm Butler, who I, I'm scared that he could just be a product of the Patriots, and then Jermaine Johnson, who I just don't think is going to be uh, going there. The, the thing that scares me about Colvin is he's protected a little bit about by uh, a menacing Jacksonville pass rush yeah. 
which can make secondary players yep. look a lot better. And he's bookended by two other great corners. So um, it, it's likely that Colvin doesn't play up to his play the last year. Um, so I just be wary about overspending for him. But like you said, he could come at value. So for me on Colvin, I'd be excited about that at the right price. Uh, the other guy I, I will kind of throw into that same conversation is Vontae Davis, who visited the facility this week. So, you know, we've been talking about free agent corners, but the name we haven't mentioned yet is Vontae, who's coming off the injury. Is this a guy that's potentially in the mix for the Oakland Raiders in 2018? For sure. I, when you want to talk about the the attitude that John Gruden wants to bring to a team, to a defense, it's Vontae Davis. Vontae Davis is a tough-nosed dude. The issue is, and it's the same issue that the Raiders, I think, dealt with this past year. It doesn't matter how talented you are. If you're not healthy and you can't play, it doesn't do us any good. And that's the issue with Davis. He has never been able to stay healthy. He reminds me of the last Colts uh, cornerback, Bob Sanders, who when he's on the field, yeah, he's a talented dude. But he's not on the field very often. And yeah. I like Bonta Davis as a talent. It's just we don't we the Raiders cannot afford they they literally can't afford to miss picks right now because I think the Raiders are a legit Super Bowl caliber team and I and I really think that with a fully healthy team mm -hmm. it's just some bad coaching last year some we'll call them cancers in the locker room that won't mesh well and we need to take advantage of the prime that is Derek Carr because Derek Carr is a very talented quarterback and I don't want to see it get wasted on spending it on guys who have high ceilings but can't play. Right. And Davis Davis is that guy to me. Yeah, good point there. Um, again, if he could be had for value, possibly, but it's it's a risky pick. We need guys on the field. Uh, big problem this last uh, this last season. Um, you also wrote another piece for Chat Sports that that came up on my radar. Was the toughest game on the the toughest games on the Raiders schedule in 2018? Mm -hmm. um, some of the games that you had listed there. Um, I believe were the San Francisco 49ers were in there at four um, at Denver Broncos, which I think every year it doesn't matter what team the Broncos field, their divisional rival, and it's just tough to play in Denver. In mile high, it's tough. Man. Yeah, and then you had the Rams on there, the Chiefs, the, and the Steelers at number one. Now, the Steelers game is at home. It's in Oakland. Yeah, and so we have our crack research team over here. Yes, Uh you doing crack and doing research. Doing crack, doing a lot of research. <laughs> um, so this is this is something that, that came to well, actually was brought to my attention a few years back. I wasn't even aware of this, but the Steelers have not been able to win a game in Oakland since 1995. Um, now that doesn't mean that they haven't beaten the Raiders. Obviously, they've beaten them when we've gone to the Pittsburgh. Yeah, but all time our record against the, the Steelers 12 and nine. Right, that goes all the way back to the seventies. Obviously, we split three and three in the playoffs. But the fact that they haven't won since nineteen ninety five, I feel like there's a little something there. Maybe it's our fan base. Maybe it's we get rowdy. Um, so I personally think we get that W. But I'm biased because I'm a Raider fan. Oh, wow, that's that's a pretty interesting stat. I'm a huge stat guy. There's uh, there's no doubt about that. However, I just want to know, I guess, how many of those games were a little bit more recent, and how many of those games were Le'Veon Bell, Antonio Brown, and Ben Roethlisberger on true. the same field? This because is true. Good point. Well, uh, I, know, I know in 2016 we played them tough in Pittsburgh with uh, with with that crew. Yeah. Um, we, we watched that, that game. game. That was a long game. It was like a three-hour yeah, game. Yeah, we lost that game towards the end, I think. Right? Yeah, we did. Um, but the last time I think they played in Oakland had to be about five years ago. I want to say that was when, uh, uh, what's his name, run that back, that 90-yard. Terrell Pryor? Terrell Pryor, yeah. 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 Yeah, so it's been some time. It's been some while. It's been a while. Yeah, those squads have but changed. Still, there's that mystique. So the San Francisco 49ers and the <laughs> Oakland Raiders, um, this, is a, this is a big game here in the Bay Area every year. It doesn't matter who's on what squad. And now we got two teams that are on the uptick. The, the Raiders have, have shown more in 2016, the 2017 re regression aside. And then the Niners coming on strong last season, ripping off, I think it was, what, their last six games? Was that right? Mm -hmm. As a win. So, um, yeah. Yeah. So, no, no, last five, I think. Last five. Okay, so what what intrigues you about this game? If you had to pick a winner in this game, and this game's in Santa Clara, who do you got coming out on top in this game? Are the Niners for real? Um, do, the, do the Raiders have enough defense to stop them? Do they have enough offense to overcome the Niners' defense? 
wh- where do you have this game shaken out? Because I, I have these these teams kind of uh, I don't want to say they're even; they're very different squads. But I think this is going to be a tough game. I, I have this right now as probably our second toughest, uh, third toughest game on the season behind the Kansas City Chiefs. Okay, yeah. So Jimmy Garoppolo, when he came in, the rate or the Forty ers were one in ten. Five straight wins. I believe he had seven touchdowns, five interceptions, averaging a little over 300 yards. But they kind of got that swagger back. The thing that scares me with the 49ers, they have the most cap space, the most cap space in the NFL. I, I think they have like 114 million, which is essentially like 100, you know, more than the Raiders. So they're going to go out and they're going to spend. And this team's in win now mode. And with the contract that they gave Garoppolo, I think it's one of the smartest contracts I've ever seen. Yeah, five years, 137 mil, but it's not a lot guaranteed. We're only talking about 41 million guaranteed compared to Alex Smith, who got 72 million guaranteed. So they're going to be able to build around Garoppolo, and they're going to be able to build a lot of pieces right now. The 49ers are on the upswing, and it it should scare a lot of teams in the AFC West. But the one thing I always say is. Jimmy Garoppolo, we have, what, six, seven games of tape on him? Right. Now there's an entire offseason. When you see people get an entire offseason of tape, to me, this is going to be Jimmy's sophomore slump. I don't know if he's going to be able to live up to all the hype. He's a very talented quarterback, but that's going to be a tough game playing in San Francisco. But they still have a lot of question marks around them, too. So they need a lot of help in defense. They don't know who their running back is. Their wide receiver core is Marquise Goodwin, realistically. So, and a healthy Pierre Garçon, if he can come back, I still think the Raiders are a better team. And if the Raiders can add the right pieces around them and keep Derek Carr healthy, I think Derek Carr played through a lot of injuries last year. I think that's why he struggled as much as he did. Yep. Yeah. I, I think the 49ers are a good team, but I think we need to pump the brakes on them a little bit. Just a little. Thanks for saying that. Our ratings just went up about four <laughs> points. Now that you said that. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. That's what I'm here for. So, Mitchell, man, how long have you been doing this? You're a young cat, but uh, you, you really got it together. You're a prof- professional guy. You're well-written. You're well-spoken. How long have you been been in the game now? Wow. I've been in the game now for about 18 months, 19 months, not too long. When I moved to Germany, I really missed fantasy football. I missed football in general. I missed my family. So when I started listening to podcasts, I started writing, and it's why I came up with my my brand, uh, PhD Fantasy Football. Oh, okay. It stands for passion, honesty, and determination. And if you don't have those three things in life, I don't care what you do, you're never going to be successful. Absolutely. So I, and uh, I really wanted to connect with people because when I listened to podcasts and I read articles, it made me feel at home. So I make sure that I put that in every article that I do and every work that I do because – Fantasy sports, Oakland Raiders, football, whatever the heck it is that you do, it it takes you away from reality. And I've learned a lot of marketing tricks. I've been very lucky in my life. I have a really solid family, solid friend group around me, met the right people. I mean, that's you can't get anywhere in life without a little bit of help. So that's why I think I've been able to grow as much as I have been. But I do work hard, man. We uh we we work crazy hours of chat, and I write a lot of other places. So, but it's been a, it's been a hell of a ride. It's been fun and. I hope I uh, hope I can keep it going. <laughs> so you you guys are based out of Texas, or are you guys kind of spread out? Is there a lot of remote writers and, and commenters out there? We do have some remote writers, but the the main gang I'll say is based out of Dallas, Texas. We uh, we we just kind of moved to Texas in September, right in the first start of the week one. So, but there's chat sports is on the up and up. I think we did. Uh, we did 97 shows in January, mm. which is by far, which Damn. is by far the most of any company. We need to but step our game up, Jay. I know, right? We did four <laughs> shows in January. <laughs> four shows in January. Yeah, we, got, we, got so we try to do week. about three. <laughs> yeah, three to four shows a day is what we uh, what we try to get to during the week. That's and awesome. And we we uh, we grew our YouTube channel. I believe 10,000 in a month. Cat Sports is growing, and it's a uh, it's a name that people need to start looking into. So, so that's it, for sure. Really quick before we le- let you off the air here, I'm I'm interested in Chat Sports. You guys are up and comers, and it sounds like you you guys are coming up pretty quick. Uh, but walk me through a day at Chat Sports. What does that look like? You walk in the door. I don't know if you're a coffee drinker. You grab your coffee or what have you. And uh, how does the rest of that day go? You guys are hustling hard. What what does that look like? Ooh. 
So I, I try to get there at like 7.30-ish. And yeah, I, I kill coffee. We have coffee on tap. <laughs> so it's it, it can get kind of dangerous at times. But I would say from 7.30 to about 7.30, 8 o'clock every day, we're, uh, we're grinding it out. I have to, I try to get, you know, six, six articles done every day. Uh, I run social media and then we do our prep for our shows, Raiders shows, NFL daily, college football, whatever the heck is on the slot. So it's a lot of that. Uh, we do podcasts and then, yeah, I mean, we, uh, we have beers on tap. So sometimes yeah. if the day gets, day gets stressful, we, we, uh, we crank those out. <laughs> Chay just woke up. When you I, yeah, yeah, you woke me up with that I, one, man. <laughs> yo, hey guys, anytime, anytime you're in Dallas, um, beers on me because we got plenty of it. But I can't really say every day is the exact same. I mean, you guys are you're in the industry. I could I could have my entire day set. I'll never forget the day I could have my entire day set, and then Deshaun Watson can tear his ACL at practice. There and well, guess what? My day's the shit. So <laughs> yeah. it's it, it's ever ever changing in sports, but it's fun. It's super competitive, and it's it's something that I hope again I can I can really stay in because the competitiveness is amazing. But you also meet a, re- a lot of really awesome people who are willing to help you grow, and yeah. I've been very fortunate with that. So yeah, the internet's really opened up this industry quite a bit. And there's some good folks out there. Yeah, and we're all kind of working together, and that's those are the people I try to connect with. Um, before you get off of the air here, I one last question, kind of book end your day. You're on your way into work and you're leaving work, what's on the radio? I, I know you probably listen to a lot of sports talk, but give me your going to work song and your leaving work song. <laughs> oh, man. That's I guess question. leaving work song is probably Drake, hold on, I'm going home because I get hyped when I get to leave work. <laughs> I'm a hip-hop guy. Yeah. I'm a hip-hop guy through and through. So um, are we. So are my we. My friends used to. My, I'm actually a big weekend fan, which is not always the most popular choice of music, but my friends used to call me the weekday, kind of like the, the white, <laughs> awful version of the weekend. So, you kind of got the hair uh, thing going on. Yeah? Oh, I don't know if that's good or not. But <laughs> No, it looks good. Nah, you, got, you, got some al- you got some altitude there, though. They, don't be shamed by the weekend. That dude's a talented guy. He's kind of like the R-rated Michael Jackson, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, hey, I love the. I'm not sh- blame me. It, it is hard to embarrass me. I'm not ashamed <laughs> by my weekend takes, but yeah, I'm a, I'm a hip hop guy. So whatever's on the radio, hip hop. That's that's what I'm jamming out to. You like Kendrick Lamar? Yeah, he's all right. He's he's okay. I think he's got some really good songs, and there's other songs where I'm like, yeah, I'm good without him. The <laughs> one guy who I'm not crazy about that all my friends kind of get on me for. Not a big Chance the Rapper guy, and I'm not uh. a big J Cool guy. You know, J. Cole, I'm not really with it either. I don't think he's bad. He just doesn't excite me too much. Like, song to song, I'm like, okay, I get it. I like Chance, but I also know that he's sort of an all-or-nothing type guy. You either really like his music or he doesn't fit your style. Right. Um, I like Chance. I'm, a, I'm, I'm 40 years old. I'm 40! I'm a man! <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember that sound drop, but... Um, yeah, so I go of back, and, and, and Chance kind of reminds me of uh, Chance, Chance. Reminds me of old school rap, so I'm I'm, I'm with that. He does. He's got a little bit of that. you know. So well, I just turned 25, so I guess I'm more on the the new side. You, you, you're young buck. Young you, buck. Let me ask you one one question. You you listen to Logic? Oh hell yeah! All right, we, we'll end on that then. <laughs> that's a good <laughs> that's a good place to end on. That's common ground right there. There you go. I can get with Logic too. So. uh Man, Mitchell, it was great having you on. Hopefully we get to uh, talk to you again someday before uh, you're rich and famous and, and you're all over ESPN, all the big cable outlets, or maybe it's Chat Sports that takes over one day. That would be right, great to see, right. too, because, uh, frankly, I'm tired of ESPN. <laughs> but, um, much, yeah, much, Ch- Chat Sports would be great. Yeah. Um, again, great. good luck to you guys. Much respect. Thanks for coming on and, and taking the time. We know it's a little bit later out there, and it sounds like you're a real busy man, so we appreciate your time. We value that. Very great. much, very much, man. Yeah, no problem, guys. Thanks for having me on. We'll, we'll get on again. And, again, if you guys could follow me on Twitter, at MitchellRen365, and check out my Raiders show. It's called The Raiders Report on Oakland Raiders by Chat Sports on Facebook. Just like it, and then you can turn the notifications on so you know when it goes live every week on Tuesday. That would be great. And thanks, guys, so much for having me. No problem. Raider Nation, get on that tonight. Follow them on Twitter and check out the, the, the YouTube and the live feeds, Facebook, all that. Make sure you subscribe. And uh, thanks again, man. You guys, you have a good one. 
Mitchell Renz, everybody. Good stuff, man. We got the the Young Bucks the last few it's weeks. A lot of Young Bucks, man. Yeah. This makes me feel old. Man. <laughs> it makes me feel real old. It makes me feel old. Nah, man. No, nah, we're good. I'm lively over here. Man. I climbed a damn mountain today. You think he climbed a mountain today? I'll take them one on one, man. Basketball. I got bad knees and no. You do that. I put a little shoulder in them. So last week I I got nobody taking me up on my forty yard dash challenge. <laughs> but now Che's gonna do one on one. I do against yeah. Against Maybe, the young bucks that we just talked to. Yeah. Yeah. Mitchell. I'll put money on you. I'll put money on the ground. For You're probably athletic, man, but I just put you in the post. Use that hook shot. It's all done. Those hips of yours are relentless. It's a done deal. You're backing them down. That's that's part of playing on the line, man. Playing tight end in high school. <laughs> there you go. That's where you get the hips from. That was cool though. Mitchell's a cool guy. Yeah, man. Damn, he's he good. works hard. He's good. Yeah. I good to- good talk, man. Good good information. Yeah, overall, like great like you said, man, they're putting out tons of content too, man. So yeah. go out there and look at I looked at it today and they had like seven articles up within like the f- first seven hours of the day. So mm-hmm. get on there, man, because they put out tons of content. Not all Raider related, but there's yeah. a lot of Raider related stuff on there. So speaking of up and comers, uh there's a site out there, pillaging just for fun Oh yeah. <laughs> we don't have a lot of content daily, but we do have uh, this podcast, and we do have an incredible comment section. We average about two to 3,000 comments a day. So if you're just craving some conversation, sometimes it may go astray, but we talk a lot of Raiders in there. Jump in there. And if you like Bay Area sports, a lot of Bay Area sports fans in there, too. We're talking Warriors in there right now. Um, apparently, we're having the best first half of the season. Looks like the Warriors are, are finally turning it on. Um the other side I want to plug is the Raider Ramble, who I, I, I write go. for. I only get about one or two pieces out a month for them. Again, we, you and I have day jobs, and we mm-hmm. have the podcast and, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. I got music. I got my, got my lady. So prioritize. Sweet lady. <laughs> and uh, But, yeah, check out the Raider Ramble. Mario Tovar over there. Uh, Andrea doing a lot of job editing. I know she got a piece out, I think, a couple weeks ago. Uh, Phil Robinson, Phil Jones, UK Raider fan. Uh, forget what he writes under, to be honest with you. I just know him by his Twitter Twitter handle from the group <laughs> chat. And uh, Ray, Ray out there, he, man, he puts out really good content too. So make sure you check out the RaiderRamble.com. And there's a few other cats out there. We just got uh, Rory Anderson, Holistic Pickle, on Twitter. Uh, he'll actually be coming on the show here in a few weeks. He's great. He's he's definitely got a mind for football. That guy's brain is like a steel trap. Woo. Uh, he he's really good at breaking down the finances, so I'm interested in talking about that. Ah. Uh, if we have some cuts in the meantime, he's going to really kind of set us straight on our cap situation. So looking forward to Rory coming on the show. But uh, check out the Raider Ramble and, and follow uh, us and and all of their writers on Twitter too. Um, they're, they're always involved. Oh yeah, and then then Sean's on there too. Uh, Sean does some great writing too. So um, check them out. Yeah, we're all coming up together. That's oh what, yeah, that's what it's all about. And um, we're about to hit the break. You got anything you want to say? Nah, man, let's hit this break and let's get Kane on the phone. Let's do that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we're going to take a break. We're here from your calls, and we will see you guys on the other side. We out, yeah. Peace. What up, guys? This is the WAP Raider. Listen, man, I, I can't tell you how pissed off I keep getting when I see all these bloggers going in talking about, oh, we need to cut the roster completely in half like this is the predator let's just flay our team in half and hang them upside down and just let a little bit left no 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 that's what happened last year what we do we got rid of our offensive coordinator we put in this new guy crash the favari you know the last thing you want to do is be making drastic changes you guys we have a good thing going the last thing you want to do is just take everything apart and reassemble it no 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 we have some trash players, but with the best coaches that you can get, with the ones that we got now, ah, forget about it, man. They're, they're going to be good, for sure. And David Amerson, oh, man, that boy's going to get lit up by Amari. I swear, I, I look forward to that. The Chiefs, I think, are the worst at trades. I don't know what it is about them. They don't ever do a trade right. But anyways, that's all I got to say about that. Wapo's out. Hey, you guys have a good one. Later. Podcast. This is 303 Raider reporting from snowy Denver, Colorado in the enemy territory. How are you, Kenny? How are you, Che? Oh man, what a slow offseason. Hey, Pillage Podcast. What's good, y'all? It's the Eternal Pessimist. Uh, Kenny, what's up? 
Okay? Yo, bro, why don't you return my phone call? You don't like me no more? Uh, I thought we was gonna be best friends, Okay? Yo, uh... Man, I got all sorts of stuff to rant about. I suppose I'm just gonna try to pick a topic. Uh... You know, lots of politics on the blog, but we gonna stay away from that. Look, what's Reggie gonna do? What's he gonna do? Who's he gonna draft? I promise you this, whoever he picks, half y'all are gonna say, see, I told you that he was a genius drafter, and the other half are gonna say, look, see, I told y'all he's trash. Kenny, Trey, Villagers, it's Plunk. So I don't have any brilliant insights about the team right now, but all I am is kind of just happy this offseason, even after last year. With Gruden coming on and lots of stuff is about to happen. So go Raiders. And we're back. I want to respond to some of these callers. Stay positive, Plunk. I like the, the optimism. Yeah. Um, you already know my expectations for next season. I'm at nine and seven. Chase holding strong at uh, eighteen and zero. <laughs> uh, somehow going to squeeze out two extra wins in the regular season. <laughs> We're going to play straight through the bye week, and one, yeah. of, those, one of those preseason games somehow is going to count for something. They're going to be they're going to be uh, pickup games, man. Yeah, yeah. There's going to be a couple pickup games. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, stay positive, Plunk. We appreciate your calls. You're a fun caller. You call in almost every week. We like the consistency. Um, WAP, WAP Raider, man. If KC wants to line up Emerson against Cooper, mm-hmm. that's on them. Yeah. Bad, bad move, in my opinion. Don't know that we'll see that matchup, but if Gruden could scheme it, which I think he can, we'll see that matchup. Yeah. Get that man in motion. I like that matchup. I like that matchup a I like lot. That matchup. And uh, some of those calls got cut off, yeah. so I, I put on what I could. You heard a little edit work in there. And we had one more caller. Um, sounded like a great call, but the connection was so bad. Yeah. We just couldn't really understand what you were saying. So uh it sounded like Wolf Raider or something Raider. Um, try calling back in next week with the same take. I want to hear what you had to say. Yeah, for sure. For yeah. sure, man. But maybe this time just try to get a couple more bars on the celly there. <laughs> Who knows though? We got a lot of fans out of state. We don't know where that guy lives. Yeah. So, but we. Appreci- but we're, we're glad to have you, man. We're yeah. Glad to have you. Don't make no mistake about it. Just because the call didn't get put on, it wasn't because of you. Yeah. It wasn't because of anything you did. Just blame it on the phone company, man. Yeah. Yeah. Just blame it on the phone, man. Just uh, call back again next week. Reset the take. Maybe add a little something to it if you want to keep it fresh or come with the same. I don't. Yeah. I don't really care. Hey. Hey. We just. Ha- we're just happy you're here. We appreciate all the fans. It's been great. All the pillagers out there. Um, we appreciate you guys. And if you're if you're on Twitter, if you're on the blog, on Instagram, on Reddit, uh, it's a lot of fun talking to you guys. So it's it's been real cool. Yeah. Without you guys, there's no show. Nope. No, it's just two guys in a room. Yeah. Which was which what, was what we used to do. Period. Right. <laughs> yeah. And we're like, hey, maybe we should. Uh, maybe we should, we should try to see if people want to hear us. Let's record this. <laughs> I Let's a, record it. Let's see what it sounds like. Got a bunch of gear upstairs. There you go. Let's get after it. Um. So yeah, I guess uh, it's about time to get Kane on here. Yeah. Yeah. Kane's corner. Bring on Kane, man. NFLShop.com. There you go. You go, already know. Go get yourself a jersey, yo. Get it. Before you do that, go get yourself that Rum Barrel T-shirt. Yeah. On PillagingJustForFun.com. PJ4F.com/slash/shop. Creative Media. Monterey.com. Yeah, you can go there too. You can buy it straight off their site. Well, you go through our site, it'll link you right to their site. And follow them on Instagram too. They've been coming up, man. They've been putting in work. I see mm-hmm. a lot of new designs mm-hmm. coming out for Creative Media. So, uh, quick plug for them too. They got free Fridays. Uh, if you hit them up, they'll enter you into a raffle of sorts. And if your company or your brand is looking for a new logo or a new design or something fresh, or you just want to get your current logo printed, uh, hit them up, man. They're, they're, they're hands on. They're making those shirts themselves and it's made in America. Um, and it's quality. They stand by their quality. So they're good friends of mine. Go check them out. They're, they're Raider fans as well. Tony's a big Raider fan. Uh, Steve, he's got love for the Raiders, big love for the Raiders, Packers fan himself. So I got love for the Packers because that's my dad's second team, the original team. So it's kind of a little bit of a, 
uh, common ground there between mm-hmm. me and Steb. So mm-hmm. uh, check them out. Anyways, free Fridays entry you in a raffle. If you win, they will bring you in for a free consultation. And uh, you might get yourself a nice, fresh logo. And check out their original designs, too. They're big hip-hop fans. They got some cool Wu-Tang so, stuff. They yeah. got some cool Star Wars stuff. Yeah, they're, they're talented folks over there. So make sure you check them out. It just might put your company on the map. Again, they've been longtime sponsors of us, and we appreciate everything that they do. So with that said, I'm uh, going to take a, this quick little interlude. Uh, you'll hear a song from my last album, Something Massive. You can check that out on SoundCloud no, or uh, on Bandcamp. Sorry, noslerats.bandcamp.com. That's N-O-S-L-E-R-A-T-Z. Uh, I think I'm on YouTube too. I don't know. I get a lot of plays on there. I mostly push the band camp. So yeah. go check it out. I believe that's available for free download. High quality audio files. Lots of bass. bass. I actually blew out my sub uh, mastering that album. <laughs> that's why it's called Something Massive. So, <laughs> anyways, that's my own little personal plug. Check that out, and uh, we'll be right back. All right, joining us every week for Kane's Corner is uh, Raider Kane, co-producer of the show, co-produced this episode here, landing a big guest, Mitchell Renz, this week, up and comer. It was a great interview. Uh, Kane, welcome to the show. Uh, Just a reminder to our listeners, this segment is sponsored by NFLShop.com. Go to PJ4F.com, click through the banner. We get a little piece of the pie, whatever your purchase is. Helps keep this pirate ship afloat on the water. Kane, what's good, man? What's good, man? What's good, Kenny, Che, y'all, hey, y'all, what's good with y'all tonight? Uh, che, what are you drinking, by the way? You've been drinking this tasty beer over here. Why, yeah. why don't you plug plug this beer? Yeah, so so those of you who have been listening since uh, since earlier in the season, since the beginning of the season, uh-huh. I was big on, on plugging some beers, and I was <laughs> plugging plugging my, 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 uh, my newly found favorite, the Belching Beaver Brewery, and I was talking about that... Uh, that peanut butter milk stout, but today I couldn't find the peanut butter milk stout. Uh huh. I had to go with the regular, but you tasted it. Yeah, it's heaven. And you can you can go ahead and, and justify what I have to say. This is it's, a delicious. Yeah, I'll tell you, Rogue has been my favorite brewery since like '97. I think Belting Beaver's giving it a run for its oh, money. Oh yeah, I've only tasted. Y'all ain't two. y'all ain't up on uh, uh, Lagunitas, man. Oh yeah, IPA, man. Fire. What's up? Oh yeah, oh yeah, 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 Fire. yeah. yeah. That's my that's my let's, daily let's IPA right there, man. That's my daily you IPA. You know, I gotta represent that local shit, man. Oh, hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? And the further north you get, the more Lagunitas beers you find. Down here in the South Bay, there's a lot of beers they put out that we can't get down here. That's true. I lived up that's in Roner Park, which is right next to their brewery. And uh shout out to Dutch Raider, who lives right there in Lagunitas, I believe. Uh they they put out a lot of like small local uh, batches, yeah. like small batch. Yeah. yeah. And they got the hairy eyeball they put out every yeah. year. Yeah. Which I think is like a little bit of leftovers from all the different tanks they yeah. put it together. That's a that's a dangerous that's one. That's dangerous right there. But yeah, for sure. Good call out, Kane. Lagunitas is is OG in the IPA game. And cheap too. You could buy a twelve pack for like thirteen ninety nine safely. For real? Hey, that's, that's right. my fa- hey, bro, that's my favorite. And shout out to my homeboy Dutch. Who always bring me a six pack or at least a one or two Lagunitas to the tailgate? Shout out to my boy. You know what I'm saying? He he, he look out for me, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. One love, baby. What do you? Yeah. What are you drinking tonight? You drinking something special? <laughs> y'all about to crack up when I tell y'all this, but I'm drinking some Miller fucking High Life. Hey. <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm <laughs> That's it. <laughs> solid. That's Hell a consistent yeah. solid beer, right? There's that a champagne of beer. That's the motherfucking champagne of beers. Man. That's it. Yeah, you can get that in 32s. You can get that in 40s. Yep. And I'm drinking a 40. I'm drinking a 40 ounce right now. I wish we was on camera because I would have showed you I'm drinking a 40 <laughs> right now, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, it's the off season, bro. We, we, what are we going to talk about? You know what I'm saying? I'm just like, hey, I'm about to douse me a beer. There you go. And get into it with my boys. You know what I'm saying? Kenny and Chase. Back, back, in the, back in the day, we used to play a game of 40. We played two games of 40s. We played Edward 40 Hands. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know that's it. That is it. Yeah, you got the 40s taped to your hand, man. You got to finish them. Kane, are you hip to the, the Edward 40 hands game? <laughs> I have. I, I think that's a little bit after my time, but um, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm down to do it. We, <laughs> so we, 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 hey, I'm, I, we could get together this Friday and do Edward 40 hands. I'm you know my, what I'm saying? Hey, I'm ready. Let's I'm, go down. So, yeah, we take two 40s, we tape one to each hand, yeah. and those 40s are, are taped to your hand until you're done with them. So Ooh. you got you to gotta strategize Ooh. because you're going to have to take a piss at some point. <laughs> and the job is to finish those before that point comes. Yeah. yeah. The, other, the other game we used to play was hot or not. And if I saw you were drinking a 40, I'll come check it. And if it was warm, you got to chug that beer on the spot. Ugh. Whatever's left in that bottle, you got to finish it right now. Yeah, you got to drink 40s fast, man. You got to get through them. You got to get through those. Yeah. Me and my hey, boys play a- be flat. The la- you know what? You yeah. know what the you know what the bottom of the 40 is called, right? <laughs> what? You know what the bottom of the 40 is called? The booty. Oh. Uh. <laughs> That's just That's the perfect the name for that. Hey, when I was when I was like 15 years old, man, me and my homeboys, we used to sneak up in like the little I used to live in the Oakland Hills, you know what I'm saying? So we had a lot of little paths that would go from like one street to the next, you know, like little paths. You you'd have to be there, but anyway. Uh-huh. So we would go up on those paths and hide out because you there was obviously it's a path, so there's in between. So we would go out on those paths, man, and we would drink forties, man, Old English, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Miller High Life, mm. Mickey's, Mickey's, and you know, sometime, sometime your boy, you know, I might get to the liquor store and be like, you know what, I'm finna just dip back into my past and grab me a High Life or a Mickey's. There you go. You know what I'm saying? Because Mickey's is good, bro. It's pretty tasty. Like, Mickey's is real good. It's fine malt so, liquor right there. Hey. It's got like that, that tang to it. Yo, I was just about to say, me and my boy used to unknowingly play uh, Edward Forty Hands. Because <laughs> we would just roll up in a 7-Eleven at 2 o'clock in the morning and double fist some Mickey's 40s, man, and we just be at the apartment by ourselves, man, just me and him. Uh, I, I used to know this girl, Katie, in college, and uh, we, we never, we, we were just friends. We'd hang out, and uh, it would just be me and her. We'd get a case of the Wide Mouse. Oh. Man, that girl would the put them, she'd put them down, bro. Yeah. She'd put them down. Yeah. Yeah. She was a talented beer drinker. <laughs> um, and then me and the, my boy, Gent, we used to drink Old E all the time over here in the park. We'd get a, a case of the tall cans, like a full case of them. Not like a, not a six pack, but a case, like yeah. a whole flat. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, sometimes the 40s. And, it, and then the 211 came out. The 211, that's. The high ooh. gravity. Yeah. Ooh. That's dangerous right there. Hey, but you forgot about the Old English and the Mickeys and the Slits. Hey, y'all remember the Blue Bull? Remember Blue Bull? Slits, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. The blue bull used to be going down, man. You know what I'm saying? The blue bull. And hey, remember back in the day, they used to have a beer called Red Bull. Do y'all huh. remember that? No. Before they had Red Bull drinks, they used to have a beer back in like 1985, 1986. And I know some of y'all fellas out there that's been out there and drinking and shit. You know this. The Red Bull. We used to drink Red Bull, but it wasn't the the, <laughs> the, the, the energy drink. It was actually a 40 ounce of Red Bull. Damn. You know what I'm saying? That give you some type of energy, though. Hell yeah. Right? <laughs> well, man, let's, uh, let's get into this. Let's get into it. I, I wanted to ask you, um, we talked a little bit about the, the John Gruden article that came out on Sports Illustrated. Uh, what... Did you you read this article right? I I know you were actually one of the it broke in the morning and I was up on Twitter. I saw you were already tweeting it out. What was your takeaway on this interview? I know you and I have kind of eased into this John Gruden situation. Like we've eased into a lot of people are already putting Super Bowl trophies on their wall. We've been easing into this. Does this kind of increase or feed your excitement a little bit more after reading this interview? You know what, bro? To be honest with you, I'm really getting excited about the season coming up, man. I'm excited. At first, I was like, I was a little, I'm, I'm going to admit, I was a little bitter. And I was a little bitter because we moving, you know what I'm saying, or yep. whatever the case may be. Yep. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm salty about that. I'm salty about the move. So sure. it's been hard for me to accept really anything that's coming new for the Raiders, and I'm sorry, fans, but it has been for me. You know, I'm 
from Oakland, born and raised, been here all my life. You know what I'm saying? Uh, been rooted for the Raiders since 1976, man. So yeah. when I first heard about it, I was kind of, eh, it's just a PR move, whatever. But you know what? Right now, I'm excited about John Gruden, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Let's do it. I'm getting excited. I'm getting excited. Uh-huh. And I just hope that uh, we make some of the right moves in free agency. You know, um, we gotta we gotta bring in a, a DB, somebody to to take over, or at least to work with these young guys on the on the defensive backfield. Because I think we, and, and in my mind, I think we're still gonna draft a defensive back. So yeah, you know, I've, I've been I've been uh, I've been trying to. Soften up to it a little bit, man. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. I, I, t- yeah. I touched on this at the beginning of the show, and I said I wasn't going to go into it, but I'm going to go into it. I'm going to reset this take from a while back. We got some new listeners. We got a lot of listeners from out of state, and I think it's time that you hear it from some local boys. And we're not, we're not in the stay in Oakland crowd, but you have to understand – Kane, Kane was raised right in the heart of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, che and I were raised about an hour south of it, so we're right. we're pretty damn close. There's an hour from my driveway to me sitting at the tailgate. One hour. Um, that Raiders moving on from Oakland has a lot of people happy that don't live around here, and that that's okay. Right. I I understand it. You're happy yeah. that they're finally getting the brand new shiny stadium like they deserve, and uh, you know. Part of my my heart is uh, I'm I'm happy for them too. Good good for them, but you have to understand that having a team ripped out of your backyard yeah. is absolutely devastating yeah. to a local fan base. And I want to say this as somebody who is planted firmly in the middle. I, I like to say I'm a pretty even keel person when it comes to things like this. We've been very neutral on the podcast for the most part because we understand we got fans all over the world, both yeah. the podcast and the team. And uh, you have to understand right now, and this is important because there is a civil war brewing in the Raider Nation, that there are people on one extreme and there's people on the other side of that extreme and there's folks that are right in the middle. And uh, we're leaning towards one extreme just because it is so heartbreaking to see this team move. We have a couple years left and uh, it's it's weird to think about. Sometimes I forget and yeah. then I remind it and I'm like, damn. When this team leaves, it is going to be so emotional. You know, it's already started for some people. They, they you know, they, they're not renewing season tickets and stuff. And I, I get that. Like, why would you? The the boat's leaving the dock. I fully understand that. I don't really think anybody's in the wrong, no matter what side of this argument you're on. Right. Because I understand all sides of it. But if you're not from here, you do have to understand how heartbreaking this is. If you're a Raider fan that lives in Montana, imagine the Raiders have been in your neighborhood for the last, you know, two decades now because we moved and we yep. came back. Yeah. Even yep. even then when they were in L.A., you had Bay Area fans making that trek down every single weekend because even on a plane ride, that's one hour. Right. It's a five-hour drive. You can do that. Um, and now they're moving to Vegas, which is a bit longer for us. It's a bit further of a drive. It's still a short plane ride, but it's just it's not California for one. Um, it's a different kind of spotlight. You know, some people I don't I haven't really heard it said this, but it it seems like a sellout move. I think to some people, just the the Vegas type of brand. You right, know, right. And uh, I'm, I'm not naysaying it. I'm not hating against it. I understand there's a, there was a lot of moving parts here. There's a lot of factors at play. Um, you could say Mark Davis didn't try. You can say that he did try. I don't think you're wrong either way. There's a lot of things he could have done. There is a lot of things they did do. There's a lot of things the city of Oakland didn't do, and that's really what it comes down to. But really what what my point is is you have to understand it from us local fans' perspective. We don't hate you for, for liking the move. We don't. No. At least no. at least here we don't, not on this podcast. So there, there are groups of people that do. We get it. You're excited. Maybe they get a little bit closer to you. I'm happy for you. For all the people that haven't been able to go to a home game that now will be able to, you will get to to understand. But you will never fully understand because a game in Oakland, that's never going to be replicated anywhere else. Nope. And the L.A. fans know it. Nope. 
The no. Oakland fans that traveled to L.A. know it. The L.A. Memorial Coliseum is a completely different atmosphere than the Oakland Alameda Coliseum. They're very exactly. different. The element out there was rough. I mean, it was a rough element. I'm not saying there wasn't good people. There's was tons of good people there, thousands. Right. But the Oakland Alameda Coliseum, you can hear a lot of things about what it's like to go to a Raider game, but until you go, you don't really know. It's actually, I'll, I'm going to say it's actually a fairly family-friendly environment. It's it's it, it's all family. It is, bro. It is, it's gotten a lot better in the last like five years. Yeah, maybe five ten years. I was talking to somebody on the blog, and he was like, "Oh wow, we went and we got harassed because we had on you know a different team name or whatever the case may be." And I said, "Hey, that happened to happen. That had to happen ten years ago because when they came out with the uh, code of conduct, yeah." The Raider organization came out with a code of conduct, and they sent it to all the fans, you know, all of us that had season tickets and stuff. Yeah. And it said, you know, no more harassing other fans. You know, it had a whole bunch of list of different things, and I don't want to go into those right now, but yeah. obviously you know that it was. It basically said stop harassing fans. So, you know, I lived through that, and I basically said, okay, you know what? That's cool. Y'all can come visit us at our stadium or whatever the case may be and see how we get down. See why we don't want this team to leave Oakland. Because you know what? There will never be that that Oakland experience in Las Vegas. You won't have that. That that experience that you experience here, you won't have it. And so I ask all the fans from everywhere, from wherever you're from, you you should come to a game in Oakland and just, you know, hook up with me, Kenny, Che, you know, my boy Hawaiian Raider, you know, Forever Raider. We got a bunch of we got a bunch of guys that's out there. Hook up with us and come to a tailgate. Yeah. And see why we're so passionate about our team staying in Oakland. Until you do do that, you won't understand why we have a beef or whatever the case may be yeah. with, with the team trying to leave Oakland and it's, 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 it's really, it's really a situation that that's really hard to deal with right now, you know, but we trying to deal with it. And, uh, Hey, I mean, you got to look at it from all angles. Oakland didn't help. So I don't want to give me, I really, I don't want to get into all of yeah, it, but yeah. you guys, they, they leaving and we're upset. Yeah, and I think, I, I think that's the message. Is we're just looking for a little bit more compassion and sympathy for yeah. those that are outside the area. And, yeah. and Kane, I mean, very well stated. I c- could not have said it better. And we actually had a real live living example. We had brought out one of our fellow pillagers from the blog. He lives uh, out of state. It was his first home game uh, before he came out, and he was very excited about the Vegas move. At the end of that tailgate, before we even went into the stadium, he was like, I get it. And this sucks. Yeah, this really sucks. Yeah. I feel really bad for you guys because this this is is a uh, an experience that 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 can't be replicated. I get what you're saying now, and I'm not saying the Vegas experience won't be great. It, it'll probably be cool when I finally walk into that state of the art stadium. I'm gonna be like, damn, this this is pretty epic, but it's gonna be completely different. Oh yeah. And I'm I'm gonna miss those times. I'm gonna miss those times every single Sunday. I'm not in that parking lot off of Hagenberger or 98th. I'm going to be sad. Yep. And the last game I go hey, to. Hey, man, is- it's going it's gonna to mess up a lot of us, man. And, yeah. you know, it is what it is, man. You know, it's one of those things where, you know, you, you as a fan, you want to side with, with, with your city. Obviously, you want to side with the city. You know what I'm saying? But then you, you're also a Raider fan. So you're like, ah, oh, shit, am I going to follow them when they leave? Or am I going to stick with the city? And they're, you know, so it's kind of like, we're 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 Raider fans, and what do we do? We follow our team no matter whether they zero and sixteen yep. or sixteen and zero. Exactly. You know, and, and you know, but but it but it but it makes it harder. I, I have to tell you guys, it does. It makes it harder, especially for some for somebody like me that grew up in Oakland. I mean, I I went to Raider games in nineteen seventy six. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's really for me. I already experienced this team leaving once. Now, mind you, when they left the first time, and I was thinking about this today, and I was saying I, I might talk about this on the podcast, so I, I'll express a little bit. You know, uh, when they left the first time and my grandfather was tripping, 
You know what I'm saying? Like, he was tripping. And I was 12 years old, 11, 12 years old. And I was like, Dad, why are you tripping? You know what I'm saying? We could just fly down to L.A. We could just – L.A. is like six hours away. And you know what he said? It's not Oakland. Yeah. They're not here. It's not Oakland. Yeah. They're moving. Get get to the fact that they're not here. They're moving. So it means that there's another city representing this team. And so that that right there, that hit me. Yeah. You know, and so for a long time, man, I, I just – I just watched the team. I still followed them, but I still kept in my heart that, you know, my, my pops was like, you know, this ain't cool. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So for a second time for this to happen, man, Mark Davis, you made it real hard, bro. Yeah. I don't think you understand. Yeah, I don't think he really understands that the the ramifications of, of what's going on here. But uh Hey, you know, yeah. it is what it is, man. Yeah, it's it going it's, it's it's to be interesting to see what happens. You know, Oakland is, is a city well steeped in culture, music, tradition, and the Oakland Raiders are right in the middle of all of that. So, um, yeah, well said. I, I think we just needed to get that out there. So uh, let's let's come together, Raider Nation. You got to understand both sides of it, and I, I think the three of us here do. And then I'm just I'm just asking for everybody else to kind of come into the fold because we got to stick together. We got a Super Bowl run to make in the next Hell couple yeah. years. God damn it. So uh, let's. And we need to make that Super Bowl run too. You know, if yeah. if, they, if y'all don't leave us with a Super Bowl run, huh, it's going to be real hard for a lot of people to follow y'all to Vegas. Uh, well, hey, look. Yeah. It is. It, what is. it is, man. It is. You know, it is. Like, I think what you're saying is true. Uh, that would be a great send off, though, man. Bring one chip home to Oakland before we go. Yeah. I think every, everybody can agree on that, mm-hmm. right? Um, let's kind of shift gears a little bit here. So. You and I have been uh, big supporters, and Che and I talked about this early in the show, but I really want your take on this because dating as far back as the beginning of last season, uh, we've been in an Alden Smith's corner. This is a guy, he's a troubled guy, he's been through a lot, uh, and we talked about earlier how a lot of it's mental health issues and, and he just really can't help himself. We know Alden Smith is not a bad person, we know that. He's never beat a woman, he's never been alleged of, of rape or anything like that. These are things he's really kind of just done to himself. But it came out this week that Alden Smith, now no longer with an NFL income, <clears throat> can't afford his child support. Where, <clears throat> where are you at on Alden Smith? Is he is he done? Is he coming back to this team? Where do you want to see for Alden Smith in the future, just personally for him? Personally, man, I, I hope he gets back into the NFL. I mean, if he's still healthy and he can still play, then why why can't he have a job? Right. I mean, like. Do you look at the, the the world, the way the world is, people get jobs. Felonies, a felon can get a job. You know what I'm saying? So why why is Roger Goodell stopping this man from working? I just don't understand it. I mean, okay, he's not been in the news, and, and he hasn't had any trouble since we last heard from his last trouble, which was he got – stopped in the Uber and I know all of this fellas. I know all of this fans. Yeah. I know all this, you know what I'm saying? But in between now and then you haven't heard anything from Alden Smith. So why is it that Josh Gordon has a job in the NFL who smoked weed and got, you know, bent for drug testing, whatever the case may be. He still got, he still got a job. Yeah. So why doesn't, Alden Smith, yes, this is the job that he does. Should he go out and get another job? Probably so, so he can pay his child support. But in the meantime, Roger Goodell is not giving him the opportunity to to f- redeem himself. You know, I believe in second chances. I believe in third chances. Yeah. I believe there's a reason why you have a problem. And if you're trying to cure that problem, and you haven't been in the news and you haven't been in any kind of situations where, you know, it would obtain you from not being in the NFL, you should be given a shot just like anybody else. And I think if Josh Gordon is in the league, then why isn't Alton Smith? Yeah. Yeah. Great point. You know, um, I'm going to reset Ray Rice, you know, Goodell saw that video before we all saw that video. Mm Mm-hmm. And Ray Rice was back. Mm-hmm. When that video went public, everything changed. It all changed. So it if you're gonna changed. if you're gonna see what happened in that elevator and let him play, 
why the hell is Alden Smith not on the field? Right, right. So, hey, hey, and another uh, Baltimore Raven, Ray Lewis, right? Ray Lewis yeah. was on trial for murder. <laughs> allegedly. Right, allegedly. <laughs> but he got back, he got back, and yeah. obviously he turned a page. He'll be in the Hall of know? Fame. He'll and be he's going to be in the Hall of Fame, and yeah. he's doing great things too. Um, so if you're going to give people, you know, if you're going to give some athletes second chances, yeah. additional chances, yeah. Then it should be the same way for everybody, even playing field, right? Yeah. Um, Alden Smith never yeah, hurt, hurt yeah. anybody except for himself. Yeah, yeah. So you give this. I mean, man, people that that can't get it together, people that are struggling from depression and stuff like that. Like, if they have a steady job, that's a part of the cure, in right? my in my opinion. And I, I think another thing too, a, a, another big key for Alden is that he he didn't even get a chance to establish himself within the Raider organization and show what kind of difference that would make in his life right um i know you know obviously i think jdr was very you know very passionate in backing him and saying you know him and reggie yeah that they wanted they wanted to be the people in his corner to help him correct the things that he was doing wrong yeah but they didn't even get that chance no because before they could even do that he was they took taken him off out. the field yeah, he's yeah. taken off the field so so maybe give him you know maybe you're thinking he's already had a lot of chances but he's he hasn't had a chance to start a new with a new organization that being the Raiders, um, give him that chance. If he, F, you know, if he f's up again, then you have you have every reason to say, you know what, that's it, man. That's too many times. But give him a chance to see if somebody else can get him back on track. Somebody can keep him out of that trouble. Maybe he gets some of those veterans that are focused in the right direction to help him out too, man. So right now, especially if Josh Gordon still got a job, yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, especially if you're gonna let Josh Gordon back in the league. You don't look good if you don't let Alden Smith back. He didn't do. He didn't smoke weed. He didn't get drug tested. I mean, he, he, these guys they both have different situations, but you allowed one back into the league. So you know why? Are, why is Alden being ridiculed or not allowed back? That's a really big question for me, bro. And I put that out on Twitter. I, I need an answer. Right, you know what I'm saying? Is he because he's been out of the news? Right. So you know, if he was if he was screwing up, he would be in the news. You know, there's people probably camped out looking for him to fuck up again. Right. You know what I'm saying? So they can put it in the news, so yeah. they can have a story. Yep. You know, and this dude is is walking the line, man, right now. So why is he not have a job? A job, mind you, a job. I, and not, you know what? A uh, position on an NFL team, but a job like you, me, and Kenny. Right. You know what I'm saying? How come he can't earn a living? You it's know, true. it's true. People, people that earn a living on jobs, they in a union, they have drug problems, they go to the rehab, and they come back to work. So, you know, what's up, Roger Goodell? Why aren't you letting Alden back? You need to give us a reason. You need to give us an excuse, an explanation to why you won't allow this man back into the league. Because we don't, as fans, we don't understand it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. On top of that, man, if you're going to allow some some people that weren't even in the league to get drafted and be brought into the league, you know, a.k.a. Joe Mixon. Yeah. Right? Oh, you're, allow- yeah. you're allowing guys to come in with a record yeah. of, you know, of malice or, or bad stuff on their record you know so he punched a girl in the face on video exactly exactly. homeboy from my who homeboy who uh the offensive lineman who miami drafted didn't he have some issues before they drafted him last year in 2017 draft Uh, laramie tunsil yeah he got caught from the the, what i'm sorry what's his name laramie tunsil 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 yeah there you go yeah Yeah, he got caught with that gas mask on online yeah yeah. Yep. Smoking weed. Exactly. But he's in the NFL. Yeah. So, so you're gonna so, you're, if you're gonna allow these guys to know. be picked up, drafted, why why don't you allow a, a player that was already established and established as a great NFL player? Right. This isn't a, a somebody that that teams needed to wonder: Is this guy gonna pan out? Is he gonna be a Pro Bowler? Is he gonna actually be a a, a, a person that can contribute? It was already a known fact that Elton Smith can contribute to this team if he's on the field. So why wouldn't you allow Absolutely. him to, to get another opportunity? Yeah. You 100% correct, my brother. And and you know what? The only person that can answer that question is your boy, Roger Goodell. That's it. That's the only person that, yeah. Sound like he hating on Alden. I don't know. 
another you know. ra- another Raider that's kind of been getting the short end of the stick. And uh, I said we talk about this. This is not timely news right now, but it's it's out there. It's hanging out out there. This man's eighty one years old. He's won four Super Bowls. Mm. He's won one as a quarterback. He's won one as an assistant Tom coach Flores. and two as a head coach. And that's Tom Flores. That's Tom Flores. He's going to be 82 years old in 2019. Mm-hmm. Are they going to wait like they did on Ken Stabler? Right. Or are they going to put this man in so he has the dignity and the opportunity to walk up there and make a speech? Right. Um, there's a movement going on right now, and that's why I bring this up. There's a movement going on right now. The League of United Latin American Citizens, they have 150,000 members, and they're pushing for Tom Flores to get in the Hall of Fame. So all of our our listeners out there on on the blog, on Twitter, on Instagram, any social media, wherever you're listening, you need to um, join this cause. Help the push. We need to get this man in the Hall of Fame. Let me just run through this list right now. Tom Flores is the first person of color before any other minority to accomplish the following things. Starting quarterback of professional football, 1960. Quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs, 1969 AFL Championship game. Quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs Super Bowl IV Championship. Assistant coach, Oakland Raiders Super Bowl XI. Head coach of the Oakland and Los Angeles Raiders Super Bowls XV and eighteen Championships. Front office, general manager, team president, NFL competition committee member appointed by the commissioner of the NFL and a contributor in Super Bowls throughout history. Yeah, cut the bullshit. Cut the bullshit. Why? How do we get this man in the Hall of Fame, Kane? We need to get the message out there. Why is this guy not in the Hall of Fame? He's like one of, what, two coaches with two Super Bowl wins not in the Hall of Fame? Mm -hmm. I'll tell you why he's not in the Hall of Fame. And I'll tell you why a lot of guys like Lester Hayes and other people that's not in the Hall of Fame. Al Davis. A lot of people accredit Al Davis to, especially if you was a head coach under him and you're trying to get in. And if it is even, even John Madden went into the NFL as an announcer. They never acknowledged his coach. They did, right? but he went in as a television announcer. Hmm. So that's basically saying that anybody that worked under Mr. Davis if you were a nomination to go into the Hall of Fame and we actually let you in, you had to go in for another reason because Al Davis was the reason why you were successful. And, you know, my thing is is if you read all these different books and, and, and everything on Al Davis and the Raiders, you know, Al Davis would fire you. So if, he, if, if, if Al Davis <laughs> would fire you, then that means he was letting you do your job. You know what I'm saying? So (laughs) if you win a Super Bowl, that means you won the Super Bowl, and he's the owner, and he showed up to to get the trophy, just like Robert Kraft. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't mean that he was the person that was the reason why he won the Super Bowl. Tom Flores has been a really good offensive coordinator back in the day. When 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 uh and you know when they won the Super Bowl eighty one eighty three. He was offensive coordinator. The man was good. He was the head coach for one, offensive coordinator for other. He was good. You know, he deserves to to go in. Al Davis is not going to, and if you guys all know, Al Davis is not going to, he's going to tell you what he would like for you to do, but if you were tough enough to stand up to him, then you're going to run your own system, and hopefully that was prevail over what he said and we we all saw that with John Gruden and and I think we saw it with with uh Tom Flores but the NFL is not giving him that credit you know they're giving his credit goes to Al Davis which is not right you know if that's the case then how come Al Davis wasn't the coach if he had to hire a coach he should have just been the coach, right? right. So if right. he hired a coach, exactly. So if he hired a coach and let them coach and then they were successful, yes, you can say he was successful for hiring that coach, but the coach is successful for winning the Super Bowl, playoff championships, and whatever the case may be, all his accolades go to him. They don't go to Al Davis. And that's why Tom Flores is not in the Hall of Fame, man. Because Tom Flores was looked at as like an Al Davis puppet. 
he was looked at like, oh, well, he's just somebody that's a yes man. And you know what I'm saying? Al Davis is going to really, Al Davis is running the show. And that, that really, I don't think that was the case. I really don't. I think Al Davis was stingy with his money enough that if, if he thought that he could do it by himself without having a head coach, I think Al Davis would have did it. You know what I'm saying? But since he needed a head coach and that head coach was given the opportunity to coach the team, put a scheme in, hire his own coaches, and do whatever he did and be successful, then you need to give that coach props. And 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 Tom Flores deserves his props. Even if you have a general manager, which Al Davis was at the same time, if you have a general manager, so what? If John Gruden wins the Super Bowl in 2019 this year, after the 2018 season in February 2019, if John Gruden wins the Super Bowl, what, we going to say Reggie McKenzie was responsible for that? I mean, I'm just saying, you know, that's that's basically what you would be saying about Al Davis. Just because he's Al Davis doesn't mean that he didn't delegate, you know, uh, coaching to the other coaches. Because then you wouldn't be able to fire somebody if they fuck up. That's true. You know, it's on you. So you need to fire yourself. So I'm <laughs> sure – that Tom that uh, uh, Tom Flores was given the ability to coach the team and do everything he needed to do to get the team where they are or where they were at that time, and they won the Super Bowl, and he deserves that credit. But since Al Davis is the polarizing figure yeah. that he is, you know, you won't give that person or those people, which means even if Art Shell won the Super Bowl. Um, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I, you would I, I only follow. you would you would you would give it to Al Davis because hey, that's Al Davis, right? But I just don't see it like that. You know, I think Tom Flores deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. He was uh, his accolades, like you said, bro. He been he's he's been in championship games with the Kansas City Chiefs, Oakland Raiders, won Super Bowls. You know, yeah. been on staffs that won Super Bowls. So the man deserves an opportunity to be looked at as a coach that has won a Super Bowl. And we all thought that same thing about when John Madden went into the Hall of Fame. You know, but John Madden, he beat Chuck Noll. He beat all these different coaches, you know, and he had his record. So if you don't let Tom Flores into the Hall of Fame, it would be a travesty, bro. It would be a travesty because that's a history. That's a part of NFL history. His 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 uh, legend or his 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 uh, background or whatever puts him in that position to be a, uh, a Hall of Fame coach, um, quarterback, or whatever you want to say. He deserves to be there. Um, we can't we you need me or nobody else can deny that and if you can please stand up and tell me who else should be in the hall of fame besides him right at his position at his time when he played and he served his time in the nfl tell me who else should be there right right um you know, I, I got nothing. I got. No, I mean, Tom <laughs> Flores, right? I mean, and let's not forget when this team was birthed into existence on January thirtieth, nineteen sixty. Starting head quarterback was Tom Flores, right? So all the way back in nineteen sixty, as as a Latino American, got to start, and that that's groundbreaking in and of itself. Yep. And not to mention the man has four Super Bowl rings. Yep. So. Let's let's make this happen, Raider Nation. Again, let let's get this trending. Tom Flores Hall of Fame. Hashtag Tom Flores Hall of Fame. It's a call to action right here from the Pillaging Podcast. And then once we get that done, we can start up with Jimmy Plunkett, man. Yeah, that's right. Two two Super Bowl. Oh man, we forgot that oh Che. One (laughs) one love, Che. Hell yeah. You're right, baby. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? Plunkett. There's a lot of Raider fans, and we still talking about Lester Hayes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Lester Hayes should be in the NFL. I mean, in the Hall of Fame. What about Cliff Branch? Yep. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Tons I mean, of players, there's man. a lot of play. I think the NFL is jealous 
because back in the day, Al Davis had it going on like a player. And he had his <laughs> motherfucking team, you know, hey, we was the shit. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. don't be, don't hate because we had some players <laughs> that was good enough to be in the NFL. And now y'all trying to be mad at Al Davis. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So now y'all don't want to let the, the, the true people that should be in the NFL. Cliff Branch, hey, there's no reason Cliff Branch shouldn't be in. Tom Flores, there's no reason. And you know what? There's many other players that play for uh, uh, the Raiders that should be in the NFL Hall of Fame, and they're not. And there's, and it's all due. They all, what the NFL has done is said, oh, that's that was all on Al Davis. So we put him in the NFL. So anybody that played under him at that time in that period, you don't deserve to go to the NFL Hall of Fame because we already put the person that we thought who was responsible for all that you know, in the, in the, in the hall of fame. And that's not true. Cause Al Davis didn't step on the field and catch a pass or, or throw a pass or run a uh, route or anything, you know? So the people that, yes, he might've been execution of the, the, the shit, but the players, ex- they, 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 ex- they exited and they did their thing and they made it happen. You know what I'm saying? And so they deserve, that respect too, especially Cliff Branch. Yep. You know, so hey, it is what it is, man. Dropping you know what I'm game. saying? It is. And Dropping Tom game. Flores, he, Jim Plunkett, you know, that's just Jim Plunkett, Tom Flores, Cliff Branch. I'm sorry, you guys. Y'all should be in the NFL. And Cliff, I told you this in Miami when I when I walked up to you and saw you. I told you it's it's a travesty you're not in the, in the NFL Hall of Fame, bro. You know what I'm saying, but your 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 legacy lives on with all us Raider fans and all you guys, the the Plunkets, the Floreses. Your legacy lives on with us, and we we will represent you and let you know that you mean something to us. You know, if the NFL don't acknowledge it, you know, it's nothing we can do about that. You know, yeah. so yep, yep, absolutely, man. Dropping game on us one more time. Dropping. Dimes of wisdom, just pearls of wisdom. There you go. We appreciate that, Kane. Uh, we'll let you go. We're gonna. It's getting late over here. We're gonna wrap this show up and uh, really appreciate the conversation this week. That was good stuff. Hell yeah, it's always good stuff. Absolutely. So, all right, my brothers, I'll holla at y'all next week, and it's always good to talk to you, man. And uh, I'll talk to y'all next week for sure. All right, brother. All right, all right, my brother. Peace, peace. Wisdom, bro. Wisdom. Wisdom. Wisdom, the man's that goes been back. that goes back. Steeped in the game, hell yeah. So, uh, yeah, we just took a steep right there and listen. You know what I mean? Just gotta yeah. listen. So, you got it. So, t- you know what? You, when you when you go when you go to like the family reunion, the family gathering, yeah. You know, when you, you you're at the barbecue or the birthday party, whatever it may be, yeah. And that uncle just starts starts spitting that wisdom. You just shut the hell up. Yeah. You just listen. That's it. This is not time for you to talk. Man. L- listening is it's time learning. for you to listen. <laughs> it's time for you to listen. I've been through that quite a bit. Yeah, that's why you're so so knowledgeable that's at your it, age. Man. That's it. You just got to absorb, man, like a sponge. Well, uh, it's time for I see you. I see you. So this I see you actually comes from Reddit, and uh, this comes. This was in my my DMs. Oh. Slid up in your DMs. Yeah, so this is uh, uh, a longtime listener of ours, Jimmy Jesus Christ on there. That's uh, <laughs> Jimmy Jesus, G-Z-U-S Christ. Jesus! Um, he hit me up, and uh, he's been going through some of our older episodes. Actually, this a newer listener, I think. Uh, he's going through the older episodes, though. And uh, he reminded me of our breakout players and our regressing players from last uh. season. Uh, let's see how we did. Let's let's see, because I didn't do so well with the record. <laughs> so uh, Che's breakout player in 2017 was Mario Edwards Jr. Eh. Kind of eh. flat there. Didn't disappoint, but kind of flat. Could have done more. Could've, he could have done more. Could have done more. And your regression player was uh, Reggie, quote unquote, don't expect help over the top, Nelson. <laughs> Which I thought was a bit of a softball, to be that honest. That was a softball. That was a softball. Yeah, but you nailed it. I nailed it. You nailed that I one. I knocked it out the park. Uh, my breakout player was supposed to be Obi Malafonwu. Yeah. Thought he was going to come out the gate hot. 
Yeah. I think I wanted to pick Conley, but I have to say he's a first round pick. So that's not really, we expecting him to break out. Right, right, right. So I went with OB and that fizzled because of the fizzled. injury. Injury. So maybe that carries over to 2018. Mm-hmm. We'll yeah. see. When we get there, true. we'll see. Maybe how MEJ it also. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. And uh, my regressing player, I had a two for a two for one. Mm-hmm. I said it was going to be Amari Cooper. Uh, and I said David Amerson. Oh. Not too bad. Yeah. It's, unfortunately, you knocked, you knocked those out the park. Unfortunately, I was I right. Wish we, I wish we would have struck out on the ones we, we hit out the park again. And you know, yeah, you got damn right. Yeah, but uh, hey, it is what it is. At least we know a bad player when we see one. Uh, <laughs> not calling you bad, Cooper. Still got faith in you, but I just had a feeling. Um, I got a feeling. <laughs> You got that. You got that high pitch. You, you're in that range. I, I'll hit that high pitch. I want to hear you do some baritone or something at some point. Some deeper. Yeah, you baritone. A little, a little more mid range baritone. You know. I got. I got to go back through my uh, my music my musical library. Yeah, man. we got to release the Che mixtape here in a couple <laughs> months. Y'all gonna love it. Uh, so yeah, shout out, shout out to Jimmy Jesus Christ on Jesus. Uh, on on Reddit. Uh, shout out to Venetian on Reddit. Um, shout out to Dicky. Raider Resk, Gerard or Champ, Jason the Great, who we're actually going to have on the show here in a couple months or about a month. Uh, shout out to Man at Arms, Hasek 21, Scott Sullivan, Derek, Raider Jeff, John Crowley, JoJo. Shout out to Nick, Incline JJ, Malik. Shout out to Scary. Shout out to One Nation, Bobby Shatinsky. That's a cool name. That sounds like a, a gangster. character from a movie, man. Yeah. <laughs> Bobby Shatinsky. Watch out. Don't piss that guy off. Don't owe him money. <laughs> Uh, smooth operator, operator, get it? Smooth operator, get it? Sade, man. Sade. She got a new song coming out, by the way. Yeah. Shout out to Tommy. Shout out to Eddie B. Shout out to Doug Lobo. All on Twitter. PJ4F. Shout out to Raider Ray. Sorry I couldn't get you on the live feed tonight. Uh, shout out to AJ Raider Forever. Homer holding it down out there as always. Always. Jesus Raider Jim. Jesus, Jesus. Raider Jim. Shout out to Otto. Shout out to Raider X, formerly X Rated. That's the homie. And Heck Legler. Heck Legler. Yeah. I don't know what. <laughs> I don't understand that name. I got to figure that out. It sticks, sticks in my head, though. So if I've given you a shout out more than once, that's, that's probably why. And uh, shout out to my dad, man. Shout out to Raider Roy. Yeah. He's probably our first listener of first all time. And, and committed. Very committed. Committed. He lets me know every week how he feels about the show. <laughs> and, and I do promise we're going to get him on there. During the break, Chain and I were talking about how maybe through April, May, depending on how it goes, how these guests line up, maybe more so May, June, we want to get some of the fans on. Oh, yeah. And want to hear some fan stories. So we'll yeah. we'll get some diehards. We'll get some, uh, some super fans. Super. I know the gorilla, he wants to come on. Gorilla, gorilla. Yeah, uh, we, we get a few of those guys on, but uh, we'll get we'll get old Raider Roy in here too. There you go. And you uh, go. let him talk hey, to you. I, I, as, a matter, as a matter of fact, since we're on the topic of super fans, mm-hmm. um, I just want to shout out my uncle also, Big okay. O. All right. We, we, were t- we were discussing the podcast at, at my grandfather's 95th birthday this, uh, this past weekend. Damn, happy birthday, Grandpa. Yeah, yeah, Grandpa doing big things, man. And doing great too, man. Good, he's, yeah, he's incredible. But anyways, he was like, "You haven't had me on yet. You need to have me on." And I was like, "Oh, I don't know if the world's ready for Big O." <laughs> <laughs> so shout out Big O. Uh, maybe we'll have you on here uh, uh, sometime soon. <laughs> oh, he—that's he, a storyteller, right? Hell yeah! Oh, he's for Hell sure yeah. coming on the show, Hell bro. Yeah. You need to bring him over Hell here. Hell yeah! If we need to call him, we'll call him. But uh, yeah, the the listeners need need to hear Big O. He's we the you're talking about the uncle at the barbecue. Yeah. That's the uncle, That's the uncle at right the there. barbecue. <laughs> Does he has he listened to the show? Uh, you know what? I'm not sure if he's listening to the show. I know uh, yeah. we were talking about Nez. Nez is his son, obviously. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, you know, possibly, possibly, but possibly, he's yeah. one of the biggest Raider fans I know. Yeah, you know? yeah. And he's the kind of Raider fan that he feels everything, <laughs> all the emotions. Uh, like he played the game, man. Yeah, he's yeah. he's got a, got a steel trap, man. Nothing oh, yeah. is, nothing escapes oh, that yeah. man. But that guy that guy's great, man. Yeah, he's good. He's, he's good. Good. I met him one time, man. I want my Nino also, man. Uh, shout out, man. Shout out, Uncle. Yeah, shout out yeah. to Uncle the the Nino. Yeah, and everybody out there in Raider Land. Everybody listening right now. Shout out to you too. Yeah, shout out to you, brother. I, I want to know where do you listen? Do you uh, you listening in your car? You listening at at your desk? Where are you guys listening? 
Yeah. I also want yeah. to let everybody know, by the way, it's the end of the podcast. I uh, want to let everyone know that we are on a few new outlets. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we're plug on you. We, let's plug those real plug quick. Those. So we are, we finally made the jump to Spotify. Uh, we're on Spotify. We are now uh, in the Google Play Music Store. So if you're a, uh, you subscribe to Google Music and that's where you listen to your music, we are on there now as a podcast. All 49 episodes are up there. And if you're listening now, all 50 episodes are up there. Um, we're also over on YouTube. So please go subscribe to our YouTube channel. And like. Like it. Make sure you click the notification um, the bell there because we will be doing live shows eventually. I don't know how quick that's going to be, but you're going to want to be alerted to that because it'll be a very interactive experience. Oh, yeah. Once we go live, this podcast, some things are going to change and hopefully for the better. So we want to involve you. We are a listener oriented show. If you contact us on Twitter, you talk to me on Twitter, on Reddit, on Instagram, you come on the blog, we're going to talk to you. Oh, yeah. We're going to interact oh, yeah. with you. We're not too big yet. There might be a time yet. Where, I'm, <laughs> where I'm like, don't talk to me. There'll never be a time. There's never going to be such <laughs> nah. a time where real Raider fans are really committed to the Raider fans. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. It's never going to be such a time. For Raider fans, by Raider fans, like I told you. All day. Um, also, uh, shout out to Raider Lounge Podcast. Um, I went on their show just this last week, so you could find them, the Raider Lounge Podcast. They're on Spreaker. I, f- I feel like they're on a few other outlets. They're on iTunes as well. We are also on iTunes. Please go on there. Give us a five-star rating. That really helps us out. Wherever you listen, man, give us, a, give us a subscription. Give us some likes. Give us some ratings, some stars. However you can help us out, yeah. man, we appreciate it all. Um, I mean, really, just to be real, we, we don't get paid to do this, man. And it, it, You listen to the show. It's about two hours long or an hour and a half long. Uh, it... it those two hours takes about five to six hours to create for you. There you go. And, you know, we got our day jobs. We got our families and stuff. So we, not that we don't enjoy doing this. We love doing this is why we do it. But if you guys can help us out, we can keep helping you guys out and keep the show moving forward. Uh, you know, between Kane, uh, Che, and myself, we put a lot of work to make these shows what they are. So yeah. we appreciate the listens. Just if you could click those little buttons for us, it does make a difference. Yeah. I know on your end, you might not think so. But if you listen to us on iTunes, but you haven't subscribed and you search us every week, please subscribe. Uh, if you are already subscribed, please just leave us a review. I don't care if you don't put words there, but the five stars, it helps. The rest of Raider Nation needs to know about this yes. phenomenon. Um, <laughs> so shout out to all you folks out there. Yeah, go check me out. I was on Raider Lounge with a uh, UK Raider fan. I was on there with JB, and uh, they're cool cats. Uh, they're pretty knowledgeable. We were talking draft and stuff like that. So I had to get up at 7 o'clock in the morning to be on that <laughs> podcast on a, sat- on a Sunday morning. Hell no. So at least do me a favor and go listen. So I feel like I did it, did it for y'all and uh, give them some listens too. they're up and coming. So they, they could use your help and, and you may find that you like them. You might pick up another Raiders podcast that you like. Um, I've personally been enjoying Raiders fan radio myself lately. There we you go. Just had an interview with Steve Corcoran a couple of weeks ago. I thought that was a pretty good one. Uh, trying to get Steve on the show as well. Um, we will be off the air here about mid March for one week, but we will have an episode for you. We are going to do a, a um, Best of. A best of episode coming up. Yeah, and we hope you enjoy it. We're going to put in some nuggets, <laughs> you know, maybe some episodes that you haven't gone back to listen to if you're old, of your new listeners. Yeah. Old listeners, maybe you'll just like to relive those memories. Yeah. We, we got some segments picked out already. I think it's going to be a good mix. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be a good one. I'm excited about that. So uh, I feel like I'm forgetting something, but God damn it anyways, <laughs> let's get the hell out of here. God damn. <laughs> uh, so yeah that's it for this week's show again tune in every week on iTunes SoundCloud Stitcher and Spotify or YouTube call us and leave a message to be played on air 408-909-PJFF make sure to follow us on Twitter at Pill is Just for Fun that's at Pill is Just the number 4 fun uh, the Pillaging Podcast on Instagram like the Facebook page facebook.com slash pillaging uh, please subscribe on iTunes leave the 5 star rating tell your friends about us it's real Lashley Gibb did to some Fresh pillaging gear. Head over to pj4f.com slash shop. Check out the t-shirts. Check out the coffee mugs. Get yourself some swag. Let them know you're a member of Raider Nation Podcast. What's up? Oh, this has been an Out of Pocket Sports Network production. I'm your host, Kenny Stapler. Join as always by your boy, Chet. And we out here. Peace. Go Raiders. Just win, baby. <laughs> Shut down.